Contrary to common belief, women do not prefer a dad bod. Sorry, gentlemen. Oh. That is false. It is not true. I know right now there's... Uh, I thought that was true. No. Nah, well... That's, okay. that's not true? Let's talk about it. Or is, are you changing the definition of what a dad bod has become? Well, mm. well I think if, you, if you're a dad, then you have a dad bod, right? But no, the, the, all joking aside, there's uh, another... I don't know what it was, a study or a poll done and women per said that they preferred a dad bod. By the way, these studies, when they go deeper, it's like, who would you prefer to have a one night stand with a uh, fit guy? <laughs> who would you prefer to have a relationship with? Right. Dad bod. So we got to look deeper into this. And, and the safe guy and the dangerous guy. Well, what it, <laughs> well, isn't, isn't that because he's more likely to stay faithful? If he's if he's not as attractive, is not not what the, the so that's the insecure uh, female, I guess hypothesis, right? That that the that the female is insecure. So if a guy looks too good, that she'll she won't want to be with him because she feels threatened, right? That he's going to attract too much attention. Mm -hmm. The other theory, which I think is true, and uh, if you actually read what women say, this this is probably what it is, is that women perceive a fit guy, somebody who's really fit, they perceive him to have a type of personality and a type of narcissism. So because he looks fit mm. or really fit, they think he cares to too much. You make all these assumptions. Yeah, he cares a lot about himself. He's not going to want to pay attention to me. He's too into himself. So it's probably not somebody I want to be with. How much truth do you think that is? That's a great, great question. Yeah. I think it could be true. But I also think that somebody, because well, we know this, we know people who are a, fanatical. That's a very political correct way to say that. Of course, it could be true. I'm asking you, what do you think? Do you think it's, you think it's more common than not? Do you think it's uh, rare? I would say it depends. If the person has been doing it for a long, long time, then they're they're more self aware, more growth minded, more disciplined. They're a better person. If it's like this short-term kind of thing, um, especially if they're young, then yeah, you might be dealing with somebody who's like obsessive, you know, mm. about how they look and what do you think? All that. Well, isn't there less people with six, six packs than millionaires? Yeah, yeah, right. So, I would think. I mean, that's a very small uh, group of guys that are very obsessed with a very specific goal. I mean, if that's what we're talking about is these guys that are like obsessively fit or yeah. are we talking about just fit in general? No, like pretty obsessive, like, like obsessively well, they fit. Just, yeah, just, rip. Single digit body fat. Well, how about when, that? Well, when in this, in the I studies, think the majority of them, I would say probably lean a bit more in the narcissistic range. Well, we have to be careful with assumptions because there's also assumptions that, uh, that a millionaire or a billionaire inherited their money. They got lucky they're yeah, not really smarter, those are false. harder working. Those yeah. are false. That's right. I, right. I think what I think the point Justin's making. I think I I don't know. I could get behind that. Uh, the that the majority is that. That doesn't yeah. mean all. Doesn't exactly. mean there's not exceptions rule. Doesn't mean there's not people that are single digit body fat, maintain that, have a very good healthy relationship with their with their image, their well, body said, image, with I, eating and yeah. And but training. I said fit bod, not bodybuilder. I think there's yeah. a big difference. Well, sure. yeah. You you said single digit body fat. Okay. Well, that requires a certain level of uh, of you know, maybe yeah. obsession, but well, I think okay. So okay, so maybe we should clarify what dad bod and fit bod is. Yeah, bodybuilder. Let's, let's okay. get some bodybuilder uh, bod to me is sub six percent. Yeah, uh, of of, of a, a ripped fit body to me is six to nine percent. Even ten could float in there. Ten, even maybe borderline eleven. A dad bod is twelve to nineteen percent. They sh they showed in these uh, polls that the. The dad bod was like uh, 20, 16, like 16 to 18 percent. OK, yeah, well, that was a little higher right. these days. Yeah. yeah OK. Yeah. I mean, that's where I said around there. So I guess the 12, 13 range is not quite there. But I mean, OK, yeah. so back to your point, though, what, where now I'm, what do you where do you I, I think that the, it, there's two things here. One is it's misleading. Mm -hmm. because uh, people are going to hear this and be like, oh, chicks are going to be way more attracted to me if I'm. Uh, fat, or if I have this, you know, quote unquote, dad bod, or whatever. Um, I, I think the the the, the truth mm. is, if all things being equal, the fitter looking person is going to be more attractive. And what requires the the disciplines and skills and uh, practices that require somebody to be fit. Now, I'm not talking about shredded or obsessed. Just fit are good things, not bad things. That's the point that I'm trying to make. Because what they're doing is they're painting fitness. This is part of the part of the game, part of the whole thing that we've been talking about here where they're trying to demonize fitness 
and they're trying to, so they're trying to make these people look like they're these terrible people. And it's worked because now a woman looks at a guy, look, you go back in the 1970s and there was a man who looked really fit when we're like, wow, that looks really good. Now, all of a sudden, oh, he's a narcissist or he's, he's got this terrible personality. That's because of the, I don't know, lack of better term propaganda. Mm. Now that, how do we paint fit people on TV and in movies, right? Self-obsessed and absorbed. Uh, well, don't and, you and think that the, the person who was, say, really fit in the 60s and 70s compared to someone who'd be considered really fit today is a big difference? Somebody who would be considered really fit, when you pull up somebody in the 60s and the 70s, like, I, I don't know, doesn't look single digit They're body fat they muscular look, but not no yeah, they don't they look they, and then somebody like there's a there's a new level of like ripped in fitness today than there was just a decade and a half ago yeah I, it wasn't I, like it wasn't i, I like, would say we'd have to because when they show pictures they're showing typically like a 10 to 12 percent body fat they're not showing like a instagram shredded yeah. you know fitness person it's like a fit woman versus an like a social media extreme, yeah. you know, type woman. Like that, you would also look and be like, oh, that looks like there's something going on there versus, oh, she looks healthy and fit. Yeah. Um, so that's the, that's this this kind of conversation that, um, you know, that's the, so the point this, I'm trying to make. Are, well, is this article like resurfacing? Because I know this was, the study was kind of done years ago, right? The dad bod like survey or whatever of what girls preferred. Yeah. I'm sure, I like, and that's the thing, like, is that, the current status. Like, I, I don't know that that was like, here's, here's why it's bullshit. I'll tell you why. When, when you look at what, uh, what women would fantasize about, it's typically a successful, older, yeah. disciplined, fit man. Okay. Because that people are associating fitness with narcissistic, self-absorbed, um, not going to care about anybody but themselves. That makes them unattractive. That's my point. My yeah. point is you can't make that assumption when you look at somebody. Now you can maybe when they look real extreme, um, but beyond that, I'm talking about normal fitness. Mm. No, the assumption you would make is they they lead a relatively healthy lifestyle. It would be a better assumption is my point. Well, yeah. I mean, I, I guess where I was going was like the last, I don't know, five, four to five years has been uh, not a whole lot of portrayals of masculine men, manly men in That's general. Right. And so the, to stick out, being a muscular physique, having any kind of masculine traits, I feel like, you know, would if you would do a survey now for women, I think it would the majority, well, at least a higher amount of women would be more attracted to the more masculine because of, of the fact that it's not being uh, as publicly portrayed. Yeah, okay, look, if you're like, if women had their partner and you said, would you prefer, if everything were the same, would you prefer them at 11% body fat or 17% body fat? Would you prefer them strong or not strong looking? They would prefer the, the strong and fit. Yeah. It's because of the perceived assumption that comes along with it. In fact, I did a post on it and all these women came on and they said, exactly. That's exactly mm -hmm. why a lot of these women say they like a dad bot because they think that the fit guy is an asshole. Yeah. When when the when the poll says nothing about the personality, they're just assuming because of what we've been told or what is I guess put out there. So that's why this is an important conversation because there's a lot of guys out there who are going to be like, "Why work out?" And look, first off, I don't think it's a good <laughs> reason to work out. Wor dudes work out for other dudes. That's uh, you, <laughs> you. You literally will never. You, like, I mean, I don't know. Like, yes, but to, let me ask you this: I mean, Do you remember you, the first time that you got a compliment from a girl? Sure, sure. Did that motivate you? Unmotivate I mean, you? sure. But I mean, it's at the to the level that guys work out. Like, it's for other dudes, whether they 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 subconscious or whether they realize it or it's subconscious. They they get more. I mean, I was just having a conversation this week and ran into some old friends, good, really good friend of Katrina, and her husband, and. uh he was telling a story about my physique like six <laughs> years ago. What? And his wife goes, I'll never forget when he first met you. Like that that's all he talked about was your shoulders. Like <laughs> And and I I laugh. We were like actually having a similar yeah. conversation you about. Blush. Isn't that funny? How yeah? How like no woman has ever said. Oh, I well, you're an outlier. When you, you know, when like, you walked in, your shoulders were like like, like dudes recognize that on other dudes yeah. more than women pay attention to that level. Like women know. Yet we obsess about it in the gym, thinking we're going to attract and and, and get more women because my shoulders have 
an extra inch on in diameter. Well, I guess like, my point of trying to bring it, the current like culture into the mix is like it changes a, a lot. Of the preference kind of changes based on like what we see constantly in culture and if you're an outlier you stick out and so like even back you know in the 80s you'd have the whole glam thing right where guys would actually like put you know like eyeliner on yeah. like wear the wigs and not like you know very but they were like all about getting chicks like it wasn't like you know it yeah. is today you know where where it's something I argue, totally different it's, i argue half the time it's still getting about getting chicks I would argue that it's still like that. They just don't True. get it, you know? There, there's an angle there. Like, we call that, what's that, the cuttlefish? <laughs> <laughs> Is that a real thing? No, but I want to make it a thing. Uh, okay, I was watching the Discovery Channel, and you you watch, and the cuttlefish has this, um, so uh, there's there's a dominant cuttlefish. This is the one that's like the, the male that um, gets most of them, right? But then every now and then there's like a weaker, smaller one. And what they actually do is they change their characteristics so they look exactly like a female. Uh, and so they get close to because the, the the male like kind of he he kind of like uh, hoards these these women cuttlefish. And so like for him to get access to it, he pretended to be like a, a female kind of works his way in and then as the male kind of goes off to get food or whatever he's in there banging all the <laughs> female cuttlefish <laughs> so Bro, i mean just, they might be ninja like that. That. we yeah. see this we see this strategy in in, in real life right with right. With men you see that for sure oh were they the, white knight the white knight yeah. syndrome and oh, all that yeah. Yeah. is that a real thing is that oh, something white, white knight oh really yeah it's the dude coming here to save you from all to those toxic guys yeah, or whatever dude. i am a feminist too and i you know and it's like you listen like oh, you're the creep you're the the biggest creep like I've, i actually have talked to my daughter about this i said be very careful of the guy that says anything and everything to you know be on your side or your team mm. and talks crap about every other guy and how bad men are and how poisonous they are because he's a coward and a snake so be he's, very careful he's a snake he's, he's a just trying to get in your he's pants a he's, he's a cuttlefish, <laughs> he's a cuttlefish. let's make it anyway my, my point with this whole whole conversation is well first off physical appearance doesn't mean as much to women as it does to men. We know this. This is kind of a fact. But really, it's about what it tells the the woman. So why would a woman be more attractive to a, like a man who's a little bit stronger, leaner, whatever? Well, he's more protect, probably more alpha, whatever they'd say, but more able to protect her, healthy. Probably it's a display of uh, better fertility. Um, so all things being equal, it's not the dad bod. Now, can well, well, a lot of women forgive a dad bod or look past it because a lot of others these other great characteristics. Well, yeah, that that happens all the time. Yeah, but I, I think this is this is like part of this weird movement. It's been happening now for like five years, where they're kind of from all angles demonizing like fitness and health and muscularity, uh -huh. calling it toxic, calling it you know uh, portraying dudes who work out as like douchebags and and dickheads and meatheads and you know just aggressive and jerks and it's like yeah, this is a really really bad mischaracterization um some of the nicest people you ever meet do you think are anybody that is actually pursuing fitness or trying to get in shape at all like buys into that i think once you pursue it no you realize yeah, yeah I, once think so. you see I think it that's pure really people from pursuing it though it might that, uh, maybe yeah maybe that's the thing maybe i don't know i i feel like that's like just the the people that weren't going to come to the gym anyways who didn't would don't care about Glom on to any excuse yeah, yeah it's just like so th th it's just well, another it's just another talking point for them when someone says like hey how come you don't go to the gym Oh, yeah. it's toxic. I don't want to be around those gorillas. Yeah. yeah right. The I'm truth not, is, it, it could be the most welcoming place ever. You weren't going. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. You weren't going. Well, anyways. I think sometimes that's all it takes. Sometimes all it takes is a nudge in one direction or another for someone to try something or not try it. Like if you're, you know, first off, making the decision to be consistent and working out, that's a, that's a hard decision for a lot of people anyway, especially if you're new. It takes a lot of work and effort. It's new. It's scary, intimidating. You've never done it before. Yeah. And but you're thinking about it, and then you keep hearing this stuff about well, girls don't like it anyway, and it's full of a bunch of judgmental people. And if people know you lift weights, they're gonna think you're an idiot and a meathead and aggressive, and you're this toxic person. Like you know what? I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna go anymore. Yeah. I think you know it was hard anyway. That's my my whole point is, it's it's like they're it's it's all, they're they're demonizing and creating propaganda in the opposite, which is crazy. Now I'm not saying we should uh, worship ultra sh shredded bodies. That has its own uh, dysfunction, but this these these polls that come out are super misleading, um, and uh, you know for the reasons that I highlighted. Yeah, yeah I don't so. think
What's up, everybody? Today's giveaway, Maps Anabolic, the original Maps program. Here's how you can win. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Also, subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, free access will let you know in the comments section. Also, we got a sale going on. Three Maps programs are 50% off right now. Maps Performance, half off. Maps Aesthetic, half off. And Maps Hit, half off. If you're interested, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, here comes the show. I got a pretty cool study for you, Sal. And I, I, you probably know it, but okay. I'm just going to get it. <laughs> it's know about nerdy. The I'm like, it's nerdy and here, you know, it's right up your alley, but uh, it's about these two um, astronauts. And so it was a four-year study from NASA and they're twins. So their DNA and everything is like an identical match. And so they're like, uh, use that as an opportunity to uh, conduct this really interesting study where they basically, one of them went up to the space station and lived there for an entire year. And so it was able to then- Oh, I think I did read about this. Yeah. And so what they found it was interesting- What did the other one do? Stay here. Stayed here oh, okay. on Earth, so they use them as a control. Got it. And uh, so as it came back, um, found all these like interesting uh, things that happened in terms of like telomere growth. Like so the telomeres grew- uh, it, on the chromosomes up while he was like floating he around. He aged slower. He aged slow. Like there was all these like kind of benefits that they got like in terms of like preservation uh, in space against all the stresses. So your body's like in this like crazy state of like uh, gene expression for um, handling all the different types of stress, radiation, all these things uh, to kind of protect you. Then it comes to earth and um, basically everything within four, I'm trying to think it was like two years, I think finally everything kind of came back to normal. So meaning that they don't know like how long, uh, you, you know, like these effects are going to have, like what it's going to have on you going to somewhere like Mars where it takes years to get there and then come back. I don't know if it's like five years. Did but the guy age slower or faster on the space station? I think, he's, I think it was slow, slower. Because there's also uh, time dilation. So um, what was that movie where- We just talked about this recently, didn't we? Where you guys said like, if you if you went, flew so fast in a certain direction, you would actually go- Yeah, if you, if, you're, if you had a twin that went the speed of light, flew off for 50, you know, for 50 years, you would get 50 years older and they would barely have aged. Yeah, because, that because was always that. a theory. I don't know if that's- No, 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 no. This is the, okay, no, it's not just a theory. Do you know that the- Somebody did it. That satellites- that we use for GPS, they have to account for the time dilation uh, on the satellite. So when it's beaming down to you and giving you information, they have to change the clocks ever so slightly. All right. Because they're moving at a certain speed and because there's less gravity. Gravity also affects time as well. So like if you get the close, when you get to a, a black hole, it's like time slows down and almost stops. Uh, yeah, I don't know. They didn't really talk to... about that in terms of like him aging slower, but that um, the, I mean, the the telomere length and everything went right back to normal yeah. when he landed on Earth. So they they were just speculating that it's it gave them hope that uh, we're closer to going to Mars uh, and coming back and being healthy as we get back. Oh. You know, because there's way more radiation. Like once you get, did you find it, there. Andrew? Yeah, uh, so I was reading into that as you brought it up. And pretty much during the mission, the telomeres were lengthened on average for all of them. But after the mission, they returned back to normal. And then six months and even after that, the, a lot of them were lost or critically shortened. Oh, so they got worse. Yeah. So later. temporarily better than when he got back, got worse. Well, the telomeres are normal. Yeah. It but returned the, to normal well, and then it got worse. But, you know, being out in uh, low gravity is like... Uh, uh, we know that. the hell out of your body. Yeah, we know well, that. That's why that one of the biggest things they would try to figure out is like being able to train, right? With no, yeah. like, that's a, a, so they went into that a little bit too, because it's kind of like, I mean, it's a very controlled environment for nutrition and for exercise regimen. And so they were like, it's almost like he was a little bit healthier than even his brother on earth because he was so regimented. Oh. Uh, you know, so they, they kind of had to account for that too. Do you guys remember in school when it was a big deal to eat astronaut food? Did you guys do that when you were kids? Yeah. Oh yeah. Like the freeze. The drink some tang. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. So disgusting. So I think that's something that like every, like, is it, was it like fourth or fifth grade? I think they do that, right? I don't know if they still they bring, do that. They bring the, the little silver packets and you got to try the, Dude, you know, 
what it's like people, dog food dude. when when uh, <laughs> when we were kids and of course before i thought i remember us, being okay actually it was like freeze-dried it was like a dry I remember freeze -dried oh i had some bar i remember it was yeah gross. it tasted like a chalky like yeah. chalky ice cream mm -hmm. but uh when we were kids and before it was a big deal to want to be an astronaut nobody talks about that anymore but astronauts are yeah crazy they're not only some of the most ridiculous in terms of fitness smart people, and physical they're also geniuses yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and they also have a psychology that is so rare that they can operate under extreme stress yeah and duress so it's like this it's like take the best fighter pilots which are crazy mm -hmm. fighter pilots are insane and then the best of them can become astronauts yeah that's how it gets it's pretty wild yeah. When you, when you there was a, these. there was a good movie I thought that did a good job of of um, telling that story. Well, I don't remember what it was, but they they talked, and that was the first time I'd actually seen the extent of like the the level of fitness they had to be in, and then also their 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 knowledge too. I mean, they're well, just the thing to brilliant. Mars, there's the physical considerations, but the bigger ones that they're all worried about are the psychological. Uh huh. Because you know how, you know it's gonna be like communicating with Earth when you're. On Mars, you'll send a message. You ain't going to get, they're not going to get the they're message for a while. Forever, yeah. And you're not going to get it for a while. There's nobody to make you do anything. Yeah. You're on Mars. You're going to be there for a while because they're not going to go there and come back in well, a week. They're going to stay there for months or years. Yeah. They actually said the first mission, they're going to try and fly around it and come back. Okay. But yeah, like the, that was like a talk a while back about like, like these pods and everything that they would have to like live in for a while and just stay there and wait. But uh, yeah, I, I again being cooped up with people too for that amount of time and like the whole social dynamic there, uh, yeah, they're worried about that as well. They why, would we, why would we ever leave a planet that we claim to be so bad already for a, a planet that's far worse? Uh, because we have because we came from Mars. There's something <laughs> that was what, original. What been? <laughs> what's the like? What's the logic behind that? You know. Uh, we're humans, dude. It's the same thing that drove the you know man to go over that mountain or to to cross the ocean. You know how scary it would have been to cross the ocean hundreds of years ago, thousands of years yeah. ago. Think about that. Of you course. don't know what the hell's out there. Yeah, no. You're like, bye. Of course, if you especially if you thought it fell off. <laughs> yes, I mean, yeah. you know, uh, you ever read about uh, Lewis and Clark and their expeditions through the U.S.? Yeah, like they didn't know they they, they had first no time idea saw, was on the other side. Bro, they saw a grizzly ranges. bear for the first time. Yeah. That's like a monster. Yeah. Oh, you never yeah. read about that. You imagine seeing that and never knowing that existed. Yeah. Like, what the hell is that thing? Yeah, I think it's, yeah, it's that adventure. It's that uh, exploration. Like I don't know, we're driven by like. Because it's like the hardest thing we could do now, besides going in the. I think the ocean is still like one of those. Yeah, we we don't spend damn near enough like resources and in, in scientific study in the deepest parts of the ocean. So it's like, what are we doing? Going all the way to Mars? Have we actually made it to the deepest part of the ocean? Have uh, we? Uh, not a human. I thought trench. the pressure. Yeah, isn't the pre the pressure is too much, right? Not a person, but I think we've the sent sub. Yeah, has gone pretty far down, but I I don't think it's went to the bottom of the Marianas Trench. I think it, you know, went into another part of it that was really is low. that the deepest uh, yeah, point? I believe. What's so. it called? The Marianas Trench. Okay. That's a, that's a, I, <laughs> you're like, I know a Mariana or something like no, that. No, I don't. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, wait for the joke. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's her name? That's uh, that's terrible. Yeah. Uh, we know less about the ocean, about the, the, the deepest parts of the ocean than we do the surface of the moon. You know that? Yes. We have it mapped. The moon mapped out way better. I saw it. Was crazy. it you who posted the moon thing that we're trying to turn into a satellite? Like yeah, crater? I didn't know if that was fake news. And I just thought it was funny. Yeah, we're trying to turn the moon into a satellite. Yeah, some star. big crater. They were like thinking of turning <laughs> it into a satellite. And then it, the meme was star? like, yeah. yeah, the meme was like the emperor was like, good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, there's an international treaty uh, when the space race first started that the world superpowers. No one can build anything on it. Nobody right? can, yeah, nobody can claim the moon or build a, a base on it. Seems fair. Well, because think about the advantage you would have if you built oh, yeah. like a like a like a launching station on the moon. Nobody can fuck with you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. You bet. Oh, look the moon. Oh, uh, you better watch yourself, or yeah. we'll laser you. We'll, you know? Yeah. Uh, did you see the the news that came out about the super cows? Oh, did you hear I about this? Did the super it cows? Over hold on, China? it gets better than that. Oh. Chinese super cows. Yeah. Did you hear about this, Justin? I just briefly. I have no details, but yeah. So the average cow. I hope I get this number right. The average American cow can produce 12,000, I think, liters of milk a year. Well, I know it's like four to six gallons a day. So okay. that's right. You're the cow. I forgot. So <laughs> for a whole Let's steamer. do the math here. Yeah. <laughs> but so what they did is they somehow bred 
cows. Yeah, okay. So I was right. So so uh, the average American cow can do 12,000 liters of milk per year. China has to import milk a lot. So they're trying to figure out how they can produce it themselves. So they cre- they created a cow, This this they bred a cow that could produce 18,000 liters of milk a year. And so they cloned it. So they're cloning a bunch of this cow. So you have a bunch wow. of this cow that can produce all this milk. Almost double. 18,000 liters of milk per they're, year. They're real the quite, clone more. trigger happy over there these days, huh? Dude, that's weird. Like they're all going to be the same cow. Yeah. Because they can make a bunch, you know? So you're going to look at all these cows that are all exactly the same. Didn't they get in trouble for the twins that um, had, as a side effect, were like smarter? And, oh, yeah. Um, what was yeah, that? But they were like addressing some kind of like genetic disease. Yeah. What? Uh, according to them. Yeah. What happened? I, I have did to read look about that, that. There was some 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 experiment they did where they were cu- curing, quote unquote, some genetic disease. And the side effect was that they, they, it's really smart. Yeah. And it's like, oh, really? First yeah. of all, you don't think. Convenient side effect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just using CRISPR and like, mm. You don't think governments are doing that, especially communist governments? Are. Of course they are. You know what I mean? Where they're going to make like super. What do you think is going to be like the, the thing that comes out in the next like couple decades that that they were testing and doing and then it's revealed like it because it's 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 been complete right like the super cows right now some super <sighs> super cows person. what we it, got, what we are got the, mammoths coming back what are these governments working on extinction what are these governments working on behind closed doors that is w- w- that will be unveiled to us in the next decade or two that we're all going to be like Fuck. i don't know before did you, find you guys it? go on that the chinese researcher that did the uh genetically edited babies the twins he was uh uh, sentenced to three years in prison. Oh, oh so le- they actually slapped down on China. That. Okay. Yeah. You know what? That's propaganda bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> they probably are like, hey, do this. And then oh, slap on the wrist. Yeah. And then to the whole world, we are punishing him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Don't do that. Bad. Uh, what do we think would be revealed? Yeah. What do you think? Uh, do you think it's going to be like military type tech? Yeah. Do you think it's going to be agriculture type stuff like that? Anti gravitational think- tech. <laughs> Just say that. Very specific, like, Justin. You know? Yeah, I know. He's like, <laughs> let me show you the blueprint. We can't, we can't reconcile with all these UFO sightings. Yeah. They're, uh, they're everywhere. Yeah. Uh, it's like nobody talks about it because we're so distracted I think with it, all this crap. I think it'll be quantum computing. That's what I think. Yeah. I think we're going to have a, a quantum computing, which will you'll be basically be able to crack any password or code. or Imagine that yeah, paired with like chat GBT. Like that's going to be... <laughs> I know you know what's funny. Well, yeah, that's, that's doesn't too hard ten, to comprehend. Doesn't so ten years as you get older, right? Five years, ten years doesn't seem like that long. Like when you're a kid, like five years from now, like, oh my god, it's forever. You know, and you hit your thirties and then your forties. Isn't that wild? Old. Like when you're a kid, like uh, the school year to get to summer feels Fe- like an eternity. Forever, yeah, it feels like forever. But ten years now seems like it's short, but also it seems like we're going to be so different in ten years. Like right now, yeah. if I say, what do you think is going to happen in ten years? Because of this technology that we're learning about, doesn't it seem like in ten years gonna be weird? Oh yeah, no. like way weird. Very strange. Yeah, I, I, I've like I'm, I've I've stopped predicting the future. You know, and that used to be my favorite pastime. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like sci- sci-fi movies. Like, because it creeps you out now. Yeah, it's weird. It's, we're living in it now. It's just like it's it's a, it's a bit much. I'll Did you guys ever watch when you guys were kids? There was this great show on television. It was called Beyond Two Thousand. Did you guys ever watch that? Oh, I do remember that. Yeah, this I is how that. this is how funny that sounds, by the way, because w- when when we were kids, 2000 was like, oh, my God, that's like the future. You know? Yeah, it was like 1995. So it's like <laughs> five years later. But the show was called Beyond 2000 and it would show like potential technological advances and what's going to happen and you know stuff like that. Uh-huh. So it's pretty cool. Popular Mechanics, if you go on, um, I used to subscribe to them when I was a kid. Oh, yeah, but if, I used to read that. Too. If you go online, you can look up Popular Mechanics Predictions from the 60s, 70s, 80s, or whatever. And they're really interesting. How mm-hmm. accurate? Well, I mean, like there was one famous one that was predicted in, I want to say 1900s, like it was like 100, 100 years ago or more. And it showed people riding around what looked like segways, right? They're right, But there's like a bubble around them and they have antennas because they're like communicating with these like <laughs> bubble vehicles. I'm yeah. like, oh, that's kind of weird. You know, we always got there uh-huh. <laughs> just a couple years ago. <laughs> yeah, know? I used to read those in like Scientific American and I was always into like, they started getting into like nanotechnology and I'm like, ooh, that would be like, it was always interesting to me because if you can you know, like um, create machines and, and things like at that small of a level, uh, like what that would look like and like what kind of like 
uh, ramifications that would have. Because they, they kept um, – uh, basically, they were thinking that a lot of the innovation was going to happen in the medical world with with nanotechnology yeah. first, but then also a lot of the uh, the textures and like um, um, like different materials like that would have new characteristics and properties. Like you could you could, for instance, like shocks like a certain material that would also be spiky yeah. or like really rigid or make it liquid just by like changing the property of it and yeah, that's weird yeah. stuff like that. I was like really into that kind of Have stuff. Have you guys ever seen the blackest uh, color or paint ever? Have you seen this? I've heard about the it. The blackest yeah. color? Yes. No. There's a paint that is, and I think you can buy it. I think you can. I'm not sure if you can. But I think you can. It's so black that when you look at it, it's looks like there's an absence of, like there's nothing there. Yeah. Like it's so dark, it looks like there's a, just a hole. It's really strange. You can oh, look it up. He has a patent on it, yeah. Because there's been other really? artists that have tried to, yeah. Oh, that's like interesting. Duplicate yeah, it. you could look it up and see what it looks like, and it does look really strange. Oh, wow, I've never yeah. even heard. I've never even heard of that. Yeah, before. There's also a room, the quietest room. Oh, I've in heard of the that. World. It's yeah. in Minnesota, right? Is it? I don't know. Isn't maybe. there a certain time? Like you, you can't last longer than like. A I certain think the record was like a couple minutes. That that's it. Because you go in there and it's so quiet, you hear your blood. Pumping in your yeah, like, some weird like it almost makes you like have a, a panic attack or something mm -hmm. like because it's just you're just too unsettling or dude, something. Dude, speaking of panic attacks and all that stuff, uh, what <laughs> happened at the Grammys with the with the what's his name? Oh, the, Sam. Yeah, what's uh, his, yeah, what happened? Doing the 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 devil seance. Oh god, that thing again. So, yeah. It's another more of that shit. Yeah. What, so I heard and everybody's talking about it, but you know, I we grew up in the '80s. In nineties, <laughs> yeah. like I feel like that's used, like it's old. Yeah, yeah. Like, come, come on, on, dude, you're recycling. Like, like uh, uh, Ozzy Osbourne was biting heads off bats and, and yeah, throwing dude. devil. Every horns rock off. band was like that. Yeah, you know, back now then. it's like all these pop singers. So everybody, but it, it's out. funny how everybody gets up in arms. That's exactly what they want. They want all. What if they did that and everybody? Yeah, them? that's because they got attention. Exactly why it. it yeah. and it was little Nas before that, right? Like grinding on. You know, yeah, devil like lap dance or whatever. So tell me more. Okay, I, I, I've already seen the you know conspiracy right pages already. Like Pfizer sponsored it. There's this underlining <laughs> thing we're trying to do. Right? Like so, I've already I've already seen like the fucking. Well, now it makes sense. <laughs> yeah, connecting things. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you know, like I don't or, know. The Pfizer or sponsors maybe everything. It's like what they've been doing forever. You know, music is doing the most. I mean, I you know what I rewatched. It was such a great movie too. Was Elvis. You know. Oh, and I love that movie. It's it's to me, I, bro. I, how far have we come? His dancing is considered lewd. Yeah. yeah, now little kids do that shit. Just hip Everybody shaking. Yeah. yeah, I mean that's yeah, but that's what we're day. we're always we just keep we just keep moving the line. That's all, right? I mean, yeah, but that this really is not even is? A, this is not even a line though. Like like, if, okay, if you're a kid and you're watching this, you're like, oh my god, that was so crazy. Like you don't know what you're talking about. Watch videos of rock bands in the '70s. They will make what he did look like uh children's hour yeah okay like they would come out and like like blood and they'd sacrifice an animal or pretend to or sacrifice a woman and like pray and like make all these chants like yeah. that was like shit they did in the 70s dude i know? think though it was that was like kind of adjacent to like popular media you, you know what mm. i mean like that was there and it existed oh, I that's, what saying. that's why but this is like mainstream well that's grammy what, it's, th to me it has that's not a bad it has, point it has every well it has everything to do with social media like it wouldn't get that much attention had it not been mm. on all over platforms and shared all over the place i, I mean remember Marilyn what is Manson? what is it maybe you can look this up andrew i'm curious like it's like a sacred what, cow this was, like the gram the, was the grammys is that what you said this was on yes yeah. grammys so yeah. Tell me what the viewership on the Grammys today is versus oh, what it was terrible. 20 years ago. No, terrible. Yeah. I bet it is, right? Yeah. Terrible. Like the only reason why this even makes the news because social media. They went, you know what they did? Because the, right the right grabs onto it yep. and makes the case. Well, they just want talking points right now. Yeah. To build this case. Yeah. That we're in the And apocalypse. then I would, I would, you know, okay, probably a strategy on their part. The, they probably have a PR team that says, hey, listen, I'm going to dress you up in a devil thing. Yep. We're going to do some crazy shit. 100%. We're going to, we're going to offer Pfizer some good sponsorships with that. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Some the, good slots. The right's going to freak Moderna's out. They're like, going to fucking talk the about half. this on every conservative channel out there and stuff like that. And then our our, our wacky left people, they're going to fucking push you, it like crazy. I, I mean, probably. <laughs> so they're, they're probably in a meeting. So, and you know, they're probably like... Somebody needs a raise, bro. Raise totally. the dude up, whoever came up with that crumb, no, they're, Again, idea. they're probably in a meeting. 
they're like, man, listen. Meanwhile, they're letting like people out of Guantanamo yeah. Bay or yeah, whatever's like, the, happening the, on the other side of this. tanking. Nobody's watching our shows anymore. Like, go get the book of guaranteed ways to get more viewership. Like, oh, page four, satanic stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's bring that up again. That'll so totally I, work. I found a couple things for okay, this tell. conversation. For the statistics, since 2000, or actually, after 2020, the viewership has dropped in half. <laughs> wow. And... Yeah, so they're starving for that. They want yes. to do everything they can yeah. to pull all the levers to get attention. I found the performer, Kim Petras, her take on it, if you guys want to hear it. Which she Who's said, that? Yeah. She said, I think a lot of people honestly have kind of labeled what I stand for and what Sam stands for as religiously not cool. And I personally grew up wondering about religion and wanting to be a part of it, but slowly realizing it didn't want me to be a part of it. So it's to take on not being able to choose religion and not being able to live the way that people might want you to live. Because as a trans person... I'm already not kind of wanted in religion, so we were doing a take on that. Oh and God! Kind of You're she. They're going. They're going way deeper than they yeah, actually wait, are. The, oh, like it meant something. Yeah, yeah. 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 Shut like, yeah. That didn't mean shit. Yeah. Yeah. It, it stands for no. It doesn't. Yeah. You just want people to look at you. Was, you, know, you want attention. Like we get. It. Yeah. Great it's, controversy. It's media. Yeah. So yeah. It's just another version of. Clip <laughs> I love it yeah. when they come out with their yeah. their deep takes. I know. There's like yeah. these real deep takes. <laughs> I mean, both too are guilty of it. Like the right has like this. I mean, that's how I saw it on like conservative type pages, right? Popping around just like. This is what's happening. They're conditioning us for all these things. It's like, no. Do you know that there was a scare? Trying to get views, man. Do you know there was a scare in the 80s for uh, that s satanic groups were, I don't remember what they called it. There was an actual term for it, but it became Not like this. Helter Skelter. No, no, no. That's it was actually this psychological phenomenon yeah. where it spread like wildfire. Yeah. Everybody all of a sudden became afraid. Well, there was that in daycares cults. too. Yes. They had this like, yeah, this crazy, <laughs> yes, <laughs> crazy mad hysteria that like, cause yeah. there was, didn't that just happen? It was like one or two daycares that like apparently had like a cult practicing. Uh, it wasn't true though. But yeah, it wasn't true. And the little kids were saying stuff like, yeah, the teacher, I think sometime the parents were like, what? Yeah, like how did that even start? It was some psychological phenomenon. Yeah, dude. Well, just... we had, the, you know, over here in the, not far from us is the where the teacher was using the NyQuil on all the kids. Remember that? That, that came what? out. Yeah, that just came out like two years ago. Really? Yeah. In fact, we were we were <laughs> when we when we moved. That kid had a, that we, nap had time. Yeah. When we yeah. no, I'm serious. Look at look it up, Andrew. Look up. I think Morgan Hill actually where I'm at because we were looking for schools and then we were talking to my brother-in-law and he's like, "Don't you dare go dude, to that that's school. That's the Nyquil school. That's, yes, that's the, that's where the teacher was at that was <laughs> using the Nyquil on all the kids. Wow. Did you pull it? Did you find it, Andrew? I mean, I'm finding it all kinds of places. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a common practice. <laughs> hey, listen, <laughs> as a parent of a toddler, I'm going to tell you right now, like, right, it's well, wrong. But I understand. But I kind of understand a little bit. You know what I mean? It's so bad. This teacher's just like, had enough. <laughs> all right, kids, have time for some fruity drink. <laughs> you know, I, need, I need the rest of the day okay, off. Yeah. Dude, my, young, my, my, my two-year-old, bro, his toddlers are great. You know, let me tell you why they're great. They will get pissed off. For anything and everything, and there's no way to like what's going on. Like I'll I'll turn a light on, he'll freak out because he had to turn it on. So I'll turn it off and then he has to go turn it back on. It's like this is all day, all day long. Stuff like this. If I cut his food, yeah, he gets pissed off. I have to put the food together so he can cut it. Yeah. Literally, I've done that. I stuck it together. Here, you cut it. That's like my banana story when yeah, I found dude. that out. You know? Oh, man. Heaven so, forbid. I just just the so NyQuil helps him calm down? Is that yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, apparently. Oh, no, you so. Have you given him uh, any of the Creatures of Habit oatmeal yet? Have you tried that with him? He likes it. Yeah, Max likes it, too. He does like it. Yeah. I like it because, uh, you know what's weird? Oatmeal can sometimes bother my my digestion. If really? I, sometimes, but that, that one doesn't. I can do two packets and it won't bother my gut. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, that has to do with the plant protein, right? Yeah. No, I think it's uh, because regular oatmeal doesn't have any protein. I think it has Oh, you're to just do, comparing that to regular, not just other- It's okay. got digestive enzymes in it and probiotics. I think that's why. Uh, hmm. Yeah, because uh, I eat it, no gut problems whatsoever. If I eat regular oatmeal, I could do one packet. If I do more than one packet, I get like bloated and start to feel kind of off or whatever. Yeah. But not not with that one. With that he's one, got, I, feel close. I I don't want to spill the beans too early, but I know he's got something. I think it. I know this quarter. I thought it was real soon here. A new flavor coming out. So it should. Did be, you have an influence ooh. over it? Uh, I think this is the one. I think he had one before the one that I that I. Let's imagine. Let's Justin. Let's guess what flavor would yeah, Adam what come would up Adam with? Adam was like some cotton candy. Right? Yes, yeah, so, <laughs> so <laughs> like that bubble gum. Yeah, no, bro, some stripper flavor. What? What? I just <laughs> mean like you know. <laughs> It's stripper flavor. These are ridiculous. Van <laughs> vanilla bubble cup. Yeah, vanilla. that's what I mean. Yeah, it's like a that vanilla. I know it does, it bro. You, got, you have the palate of a Hey, kid. did you see uh, McGregor coming back? 
He's fighting again. No, I or? heard. I heard he got. Yeah. 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 He's fighting. Um, fight. uh, Chandler. What's his name? Like Michael Chandler. What's the, like maybe Andrew? You can. Is it Michael Chandler? Yeah. yeah Michael I forget. Chandler. How is it? Yeah. Yeah. He's he's coming back. Did you also see at the end of the month? He's uh, huge right now. Like yeah, he's, he is. he's like been on. I mean, because he broke literally broke his leg, and so it's like you know the therapy of that. I think he's been on some he for like sure some sauce to, to guarantee. Help accelerate. You know what's so funny is that you know this is a, this misconception around I think steroids sometimes, especially in the fight game. Like people just assume that like it's this massive advantage. And don't get me wrong, there's some advantages to using anabolics uh in a lot of ways. But when a guy just puts on 20, 30 pounds and he's been an athlete in a sport forever, like it doesn't always play out the way you think it's going to play it's out. It's also in a different way. Oh class. yeah, no, yeah, we we've seen that. If if you're fighting in a bigger box, like fight fighting is completely different too. Yeah. Like in terms of that, because like you know, like you have to account for all that movement and the speed and the agility and Look, all that gets affected. You take a guy who's naturally two hundred pounds, and you have and he, and he fights and he trains, and you have another guy who trains and fights who has to take anabolics to weigh two hundred pounds. The yeah. natural guy's got the advantage. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's been living in that body. That's for a his long body. Time. The other yeah. guy's got to force his. Now, size makes a difference when you're fighting guys who are smaller. So, yeah, now he's going to have an advantage over guys who are 150 pounds. But UFC's got weight classes. Yeah. yeah. So, you see, what, you see Jake Paul, too, his oh, fight. Oh, with uh, Tommy his, Fury. Is that who? The real, that's the first professional boxer he's actually, like a, a boxer, current, right now, good boxer, professional boxer. Wow. That's his weight class, too. Is so he like, retired or is he still boxing? No, he's a, the boxing. Tommy Fury is a, is yeah. a, a current boxer right okay. now. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, well, he's that's... not as good as his brother, but he's, he's, he's still a good boxer. And so this is like the first, like everybody's been, you know, and I mean, first of all, I think you get the credit Jake Paul no matter what. I mean, he was yeah. a, a, a nobody fighter just five years ago, and the fact that he's beating anybody, like I don't think I would go beat those MMA guys in boxing just because. No, he, he keeps created a whole new genre for sure. Yeah, so he and so, but this is where like everybody is. I think he's. It's going to be interesting because of, or from what happens from this, win or lose, like imagine like I you got to think that there's a big majority. Okay, there's there's going to be a, a split, right, of people that are that are really paying attention to Jake Paul. You have the like super fans of him that are like that love him. Then you have probably I would say half of the people that are just wanting to see him get his ass kicked yeah. oh, or yeah. see him actually yeah. lose. And because he keeps winning, he keeps sucking these people back in. I mean, I'm guilty of this. I've yeah. I've ordered a couple of the fights because I'm just curious to watch. One of these guys is gonna is gonna whoop his ass. He keeps winning. And you slowly start to like him. You're like, oh, yeah, you're right. So you What's so happening. <laughs> what, what happens? Okay. Well, how does how does this play out for this new genre of fighting? Like when these fighters and they finally pick a fight where they got to fight somebody who's really good at boxing. What happens when he gets his ass kicked? Is it over? Is his career completely done? I think he still has another chance if he loses once. Why? Who do you like? Now, mm, now are you in, are question. you still interested to see him fight anymore? Good Jake Paul. Yeah, yeah. If you're, yeah. If, he loses, if you're hate following him, probably not. Because I, mean, I don't. Okay, so I wouldn't classify me as as either of those categories. Like I'm kind of in the middle. Like I'm not. I'm definitely. I like. I'm. I'm always curious and interest of people that have that build you know large businesses or get l large amounts of fame, especially in today's world. So I'm curious about him. Um, yeah, I'm interested to see somebody potentially beat him or him fight that, but I'm not like I. And I think that I would lose interest after that. If he goes and he fights, it depends how he loses. If he just like gets embarrassed, then maybe. But if he fights and then he loses because he's already won a few, and if he does this great yeah, comeback story, yeah, but he's he's he hasn't won a few of, uh, against real boxers, right? And so if what he, if his he, first if his first fight against a real boxer, which by the way, Tommy Fury is a, a, a good boxer. Yeah. He's not a great boxer. Yeah. So if he loses to just a good boxer, it depends how he loses. I think really, yeah. Like if he loses and it looks like embarrassing, like he just gets schooled. But if he does okay, he does pretty good, and then he loses, he might have an opportunity to try and fight other people and come back and, and maybe get accolades just for trying. You know what I mean? Mm. Like if he if he does okay, it's like the Rocky story. Well, do you, it goes back to Rocky. But it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. Do you think after this fight that if he wins and, and it's in pretty dominant fashion that he then steps into the actual boxing league 
Oh yeah, I mean, if he wins, oh, well, if yeah. he wins, this extends his money making yeah. career as a boxer for sure. Yeah, like right. Like you go for a title, like, or at least like work his way in that. I mean, I mean, he sets the table for himself for the next, you know, three to five fights yeah. of making good money. Because if you go, man, he comes in his first attempt at a, a professional fighter and he wins. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's definitely setting the table. I mean, the for whole himself. reason why they are agreeing to fight him is because he brings money. Yeah, of he course. Brings, he brings uh, fans and money. And yeah, views. I'm pretty yeah, sure this will be Tommy Fury's biggest f money or purse. I think. God. I'm sure it will it, be. What is this? You know, what this is like yep. so proves that you can be a great athlete, which is important. But what's more important is how, how you market yourself. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, if, especially for fighting, but it's for all sports. Like if you're that athlete that that you know that people want to watch for whatever reason. You're going to get paid more than someone who's better than you, you know? Yeah, unless you, you know, you take it to the extreme, like a T.O. or somebody like that, where it's like you're in a team dynamic. I think sports are like- You're you right. Could, you could take yeah. different sports and yeah. like- Team What's is a little point? different. What's your My point? point is that if you're, it's all about your brand and your um, uh, uh, personality and you're like really like this person everybody wants to watch, but you're not a good team player, it doesn't work in, in like a-, a football setting or like oh, a okay. you know, basketball, basketball yeah. setting you, can, or like you can nobody yeah. wants to give you the ball you know at that point yeah no you're right that's yeah. i think it's a good that's, that's a, good a good point, point individual right? sports it, it it plays in your favor a lot yeah you know, there's a guy in uh you know the kudos to netflix for doing this they do such a good job of this i, I remember when i brought up a couple of years ago when they did the f1 racing uh, TV series or like that, like all of a sudden I became interested yeah. in F1 racing, never cared to watch it before. Yeah, it was now, a good series. Yeah, it was a great series. You know that they've done another one with tennis and maybe Andrew can look up the name of it, but it's really cool. I believe it was the Australia Open that they they did like this whole series and the way they did the series is each episode kind of kind of like the F1 where they followed like a competitor and so they, for a guy like me who doesn't watch any tennis whatsoever, you, they build a little bit of a storyline from each one of these professional athletes mm. that are in the open and you get a glimpse of their character and then you get to watch their match. Now all of a sudden I'm curious. Yeah. And now I like guaranteed if I'm it's flipping the through the channels to, yeah, and one of those sport, guys is playing, watch. I'll want to watch yeah. because I've, it's so, it's, what's, it's so what's brilliant. It called, Andrew? Break points. Break yes, point. that's it. And there's a guy, I don't know his name, but, uh, and I didn't know who he was before, but he's like this, you know, breaking the rackets and talking shit. He's like super animated, does crazy shots, which I didn't even know about this player. So. You know who, do you know who was really, who's really good at tennis? Do you guys know that? Uh, that we know? Not, yeah, that you guys know. A friend of ours? Doug? Yeah. Doug. Is oh, he yeah. really? Yeah. He looks like he might play tennis. Doug yeah. played play, he, he, table he, tennis? I, I or believe real it. Tennis? Yeah. Real tennis. He played it for a while. I'm good at table tennis. He was like, he yeah. likes, he played it for a little while. Did he really? Yeah. I don't know how he competed or whatever, but. I've never even seen a racket around him. Yeah. That's funny. Man, when, he gets, when he comes I took back. took like lessons as a kid. How did you I find that out? When were you guys talking about tennis? Well, you I don't know, even see that coming up in conversation with you guys. We have a different relationship. Than you. <laughs> very different. Your guys' relationship is very physical. I mean, I. Activity no, based. really. When did you even bring up tennis with him? How well, I used to train him, so I, I knew all about his phys like his exercise, like his past workouts and exercise. So he used to run. He did. Like, he liked to run for a while. He played tennis for a while. That's interesting because he's always said to like he always identifies as like similar to you as far as like being the like non ball sport guy. Yeah. So I, I've never heard him even mention tennis yeah, before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. He Was he? Play. Did he claim to be good? I mean, you know, Doug. He's super. Uh, this is cool talking about Doug while he's not here. I know, right? This will be great. Can't wait, wait for him to hear this. Yeah. He's, uh, you know, he's humble. He never, you guys know that. Doug's not the type no, to like course. talk yeah. about how good he is at anything until you realize, like, oh, he's pretty damn good. But uh, I would imagine he's fault. pretty good. Yeah, he's that. He's he's very like conservative about everything. And yeah. very humble. Like doesn't say, it doesn't say much about No, him. but I know he played for a while and, uh, you know, Doug's hella competitive, which again, he doesn't even say that he is, but oh, he's extremely yeah, no, competitive. You see it. Very competitive. <laughs> Um, so I'm sure he was pretty damn good, but yeah. I remember he used to go play all, when I used to train him, he would, that was part of his workouts. Did it take when you were training him? Okay. Back in the days, or do you, can you recall this? Like, like the, the time it took, you know, when you meet a client, like some clients, like it, it takes you a while to really crack them open and like get to know them and like where you bond. It's like, was he like that? Or was it like instant? Like you guys bonded right away. Do you remember? Yeah, right away. Oh, right away. Yeah. I, I, he, he likes, uh, to be sold. So, <laughs> so he's perfect for me. Yeah. That's why he's perfect. Well, no, no, like, like, because I was ready to sell him I some shit. Well, no, he, well, he, like Doug, he, he, you know, okay, you guys know Doug. Stop, like, you guys know what I mean. 
He likes it when somebody really explains something to him and, and, and they're passionate about it. And then if he oh, tries yeah, it totally. and it works, then yeah. he's sold. Totally. And he he doesn't you know. So he was like on board. I mean, isn't that a, a proven thing about all salespeople? Yeah. Isn't that, isn't, haven't they? You done, like to be sold. Yeah. Yeah. They buy do, somebody right? good. If I, in fact, if I want to buy something and I go buy it from a salesperson, a salesperson like isn't like doing a great job. I almost want to be like, you know what? I'm not buying this because you suck. Even though yeah. I want to buy it, you don't get this. I'm out of here. Right. I've told people that. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. I've told people that they, they didn't do it. If you would have done a good job on me, you would have got me to, to buy and I didn't even want that. But I mean, I, I am that person who, if you, I don't know if we were on air when we were talking about the other day when the kid came to my door, I was so surprised to get door to door sales. Like that was uh, so wild. Was he good? He was. I mean, what was more impressive to me than like his presentation was just, I mean, I can't remember the last time I seen anybody. I thought door to door was dead. I didn't think I, I can't remember the last time someone knocked on my door. Do you know how good you have to be to make sales door to door. Yeah, you know what I was impressed with. Like he was nobody a, wants to talk to you. He was a young <laughs> yeah. kid, and you could tell. And I, I had that look on my face too. We're in the middle of dinner. Like I, cry, I barely even opened the door all the way, and I'm looking at him, kind of like head cocked to the side, like, "What do you want, dude?" You know, and like so, I, I know I was not giving him like good <laughs> energy, right? And I didn't say anything. I just let him do his thing, and he kind of fumbled his words a little bit, but. What what I was impressed with and why I that he did him. it. You were yeah, yeah, that he exactly. did it. I yeah, just thought, yeah. man, you know, good for you, bro. Like, I know this is like, a, I mean, what's the the turn down rate and door to door has got to be like nobody answers the door. First of all, everybody has ring cameras and shit. Yeah, yeah, ninety so percent on right away, bro. I I, I mean, so, one in a hundred you might get like that. So like my cousin used to sell. Yeah, he in the nineties he used to sell vacuum cleaners door to door. Oh, uh, like Rainbow. Uh, no, it was uh Lux Luxalite. Lux, I don't remember the name. You of know, it. that's one of I have a I have a, a, such a vivid memory of a door to door sales guy selling rainbow vacuums to my mom for some reason, because he came in and he dumped a fucking yeah. a coffee can yeah. of like sugar like on the just um, as yeah bro just, yeah, my, that's exactly what this, my cousin say like oh people open God. the door and he'll just dump yeah her, <laughs> just throw it just dump through in the cart right like away. what don't worry about it <laughs> you yeah. know or, or let me out. see your vacuum they'll clean it he'll be like now look at all the stuff it missed and then he cleans it with theirs like wow that was like a thousand dollar vacuum back then yeah 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 dude if somebody if I open the door and someone just threw dirt just on my floor right away like. You're gonna clean it, and then does I'm that, gonna, I'm does that to company still look up Rainbow Vacuums and tell me if it's still a a big brand? That was a that was a big door to door sales brand back in the and it had uh, Rainbow doesn't mean the same thing anymore these days. Yes. I might change the name. Yeah. It it was a uh, our you, vacuum. You had a water. <laughs> It, it had like the water Good. filter system where it like created a whirlwind or whatever like that and cleaned it up. <laughs> you so guys like got a, closed. Did oh yeah, no. We, the paper plans, dude. But... Listen, okay, my, hey, we had a horse and we had a rainbow vacuum. <laughs> Dang, <laughs> but no you, business, bro. No <laughs> business. A thousand dollars. No vacuum. business. It was like twenty percent of my or thirty percent of my parents' income. Is that me. it? Yeah. Whoa, wow. That's a, that's a new one. Hey, hey. <laughs> if you go what? on there, put your last name. You still owe money on the vacuum. How long have they been in company? Or in business? In company? In business? Yeah. There was Kirby Luxolite, yeah. I think is the other one. And then Rain these dude, guys. rainbows have been I've on never a long heard time. of it, dude. You've never heard rainbow vacuums? No, uh -uh. it looked nothing like this. Ours was brown, and it did have that water at the bottom like that. That's since 1936. Damn, 1936. We dude. had some crappy one in a dust buster. I remember just dust busting everything. Yeah, what that's... are those things right go for price wise? They're expensive, dude. Why they were expensive back in the 80s? Thousand yeah. dollars for a vacuum in the 80s? Think about what that what, what that would be today. Oh. It's like with inflation and that's got to be like $10,000, no? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> well, I don't know about that. Dude. <laughs> $10,000. That's, that's like a $10,000 vacuum. Dude, well, I always Wait, felt in 1980s, $1,000 would not be close to what $10,000 is today? I with don't inflation? Think it's that much. Sure it would be. $10,000? 1980, go 1980 to 2023, do the, do the standard 2 to 4% like, inflation and, and go, yes. How much I is $1,000? Like how would you 000. look that up? How much is $1,000 in 1980 worth today? I think that's what you would Yeah, there up. you go. Yeah. What you got? Um, I mean, the site is sending me to a distributor, but- when I'm looking in the range is eight hundred to three thousand dollars range. Oh yeah, but give me the give me what Sal just said. Say how he, much was a thousand dollars in nineteen eighty? How much is that worth today? I'm gonna be I'm gonna be close. Think we ten grand. Yeah. So people 10? were spending ten thousand dollars on that. My parents? family was. <laughs> oh my god, dude. My family was, dude. <laughs> We probably were making payments for like nine years on it. <laughs> <laughs> Vacuum's been broken for like five I mean, five was it at least legit? Like, did it- uh... Oh, it, it was the Elnana back then, okay. man. Yeah, no, Because then were... Dyson kind of came in, uh, yeah. and I was like, this is like the most over-engineered yeah. uh, vacuum crazy. I've well, ever it's seen. Like, what's it say? 
So a thousand dollars in nineteen eighty is equivalent in purchasing power to three thousand six hundred dollars. Oh, okay. Ten thousand oh, dollars. Okay. See, okay. I said two thousand. I was way off. I was way <laughs> off. Because <laughs> I can't imagine. It was believable yeah, though. Yeah. I mean, bro, a but ten, still, a, my parents paying three thousand dollars. A ten thousand dollar vacuum oh, would have ridiculous. to literally suck spirits out of the sky. Like that's you know what I mean. It would have to be like. Well, I think I think the selling point yeah. was is like it was like a commercial. Yeah. Um, um, you know, what are they called? Like a dry cleaning type of yeah. deal. Cause it had the water and everything. Uh -huh. right? Yeah. I mean, and it, it, it sucked up the, the, the coffee grains and the yeah. sugar. <laughs> you know, the I think, mold I, the I think it even spilt like Kool-Aid or something on there too. So <laughs> oh my God. Like, got my family. And you're hella mad as a kid. Give me that Kool-Aid. What the hell? Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. Mind you, I didn't get any Christmas presents that year. Yeah. <laughs> the fuck? We hey, got a, kids. We got a thousand dollar vacuum though. <laughs> we I got a new it. chore. Yeah. <laughs> Some bullshit. Hey kids, look what we we got we all decided to get you all one gift together. Uh, vacuum cleaner. Uh, now you guys can clean the house. Yeah. 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 Speaking of Kool-Aid and stuff that makes you fat, did you guys know that uh <laughs> sleeping in cool temperatures may actually help accelerate fat loss? I actually found some studies that when people sleep uh, in a cool room, it sets the stage for better fat loss. So now, is that because you get better sleep, therefore your metabolism, sleep, hormone profile, yes, i.e., all that better stuff. sleep, melatonin production, better serotonin production, less cravings. So they find in some of these studies that when people cool down their room or their bed, that they start to lose weight. They burn body fat. So I know you're bringing that up because we have a sleep me commercial today, but I hate. Stuff like that. Why? Because it's like leap to leap to leap to prove a point, right? Well, we we at least know this. Like this is you'll get better. Sleep. Science, science is guilty of this though, yeah, like crazy. Yeah. Like it's like you can because you can connect it. <laughs> I, know, I know sleep means like wait, nice fucking commercial <laughs> for me, guy. Wait, we were on a roll. I've already said the shit's bomb, right? The thing is, like it's one of my favorite things that we have invested in, and I think I, I, not a single night goes <laughs> by that I don't use our. I'm like our, these look, are like logic threads I would use to sell my wife on keeping it super freezing in in you know the room. Yeah, yeah. It's be like, hey, babe, it's fat loss. Like, babe, you are you. Interested yeah. in, in having a good marriage for the rest of our lives? That's well, yeah. right. Yeah. Well, don't you think good sleep will contribute to that? <laughs> well, yeah. did you know the studies show? Boom. Well, where it's been sleep able me. to save me sleep is that me. it allows her to keep the room warmer than I like because I can keep my sheets like mm -hmm. ice cold. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which that has been life saving because that's we are completely opposite when it comes to that. She would be totally okay with keeping our house between seventy five and eighty degrees. Wow, um, that and hot! Then, and then having sheets Holy crap. on us on and like a comforter. Seventy five to eighty. Yeah, she would be oh. totally comfortable with that. When it's like she was complaining last night. It's like she's the like, jungle. She's like, it's, I cracked the window right before we were getting going to bed, and she's like, "Did you just open the window?" I'm like, "Yeah, it's hot." She's like, "It's cold in here." I walk over to the thermostat. It's seventy one in the house. Mm. Like it's seventy one. <laughs> How is that? I feel cool bad. Too. I keep it like sixty. Like the kids have like I, I go. They wear jackets, dude. They were, yeah, he like a jacket. He had five blankets on top of him. I'm like, oh man, like I, I felt a little guilty. You know, that was my favorite. Play Justin's I, in his underwear. Yeah, it's like you know, I'm like totally like. That was my favorite thing about owning a townhome. When I was in a townhome. That was small square footage. Man, you those things. The hell out of oh it. yeah, and they're and you're boxed in because you have people on the side, so the insulation's good. Like, man, I could I, that place could be super hot. I could freeze it out within like minutes. Oh, uh, I it reminds me. I, I had a funny conversation with Ethan last night because um, uh, he was going to bed. I was saying good night and all this, and and um, uh, he asked me something. I forget what he what he asked me, but it was like one of those things where I just immediately kind of went into dad mode of having to be like, okay, this is a lesson. I have to teach him a lesson, you know, and all this, instead of him, it was about a joke and like seeing an inappropriate joke. I'm like, hope you don't say this around, you know, your teachers and like your other friends and just be careful. Blah, blah, blah. And then I just stopped. I'm like, dude, I'm so lame. Like, yeah. I can't, like, I can't be like your friend and be like, ah, oh, it's a hilarious joke. High five. You know, yeah. like, I'm, I'm like, I've, I literally, as a dad, turned into like a Saturday morning cartoon with a PSA at the end. Always. Every time. Every time. I know. Like, you know, like, help lead this old lady cross the street, you yeah, know? Yeah. And I, so I just realized that. I'm like, dude, uh, yeah, so corny. Oh, you have a girlfriend? That's great. You guys That's like great, each other. That's awesome. But also, here, let me send you some text yourself. Of you know STDs. Mean? This is yeah. what they look like. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> just look at all the warts. Yeah. yeah. Terrible. Oh, my God. Anyway, oh, so we got a shout out. That's right. We got to give it a shout out. Uh, on Twitter, Kevin N. Bass. He's huh? a, a researcher, a medical student researcher. He just wrote an article for Newsweek 
and it is going viral. Um, and I appreciate him because he's objective. And I'm going to read to you the title of this article. We don't have to get into it um, because it'll it'll be another hour here. But I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you the title of the article. Uh, the title of his article in Newsweek is "It's time for the scientific community to admit we were wrong about COVID." And he goes down the whole list of all the Ooh. stuff that they did and the the damage that it caused, the unintended consequences, and how they made people feel who questioned or thought maybe I don't want to go with that policy or whatever. Whatever. And he said in this article and in some interviews that the medical community's uh, reputation has been damaged severely because of how things were handled. And he says, in order to move forward, we need to admit that we were wrong about a lot of things. Hmm. So anyway, really good, very objective guy. Great follow. Interesting. On, What's on his Twitter. name again? Kevin Bass. Kevin Bass. All one word? The, yeah. Well, the, the handle is Kevin and then another N. So Kevin and Bass. Oh, okay. Hey, what's up, everybody? Look, uh, multivitamins can help fill in nutrient gaps. Uh, here's the problem. Multivitamins for kids, it's basically candy. You're talking about a lot of sugar. They're like gummy candies, uh, and they don't provide great nutrients. Well, we're work we are working with a company called Haya Health that makes children's multivitamins with no sugar and none of that gummy junk in there. It's non-GMO. It's vegan, dairy-free, allergy-free, gelatin-free, nut-free, everything else you can imagine. It's a great product, and it's designed for kids of all ages. So if you're interested, go to HayaHealth.com. That's H-I-Y-A Health.com forward slash Mind Pump and get 50% off your first order. All right, here comes the rest of the show. First caller is Pradeep from San Francisco. What's up, Pradeep? How can we help you? I've been listening to all three of you uh, over the last three to four months. And, you know... Every day it's like eye opening. <laughs> Whenever I hear the questions, hey, I'm going through that question. I'm 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 going through that. So it's I can relate a lot when I hear the comments, the questions, and how you answer them. So thank you for all that you do. Awesome. That's great. Yeah. So uh, the uh, the question I sent one question on the email to you guys, and then uh, very recently I had a follow up question, but I'll start with my original question. So I, like, I'm 39 years old. I am 225 pounds. And I have a very high body fat of 33%. And I never did weights in my life uh, or strength training until eight months back. And uh, um, actually, one year back, I was 240 pounds and I did three months of cardio, got to 225. And uh, somewhere, I don't know if I stumbled upon to you guys who said that, you know, focus on strength training. So I went into strength training. So what happened is that in the last eight months, I haven't lost a single pound uh, of, uh, I mean, I haven't lost a single pound of weight. I'm still at 225. Having said that, I have lost around three inches around the waist. So I feel really good about that. And uh, eight months is a long time not to see any movement on the scale. Uh, but at the same time, since I'm seeing movement around the waist and my body fat is coming down, uh, I feel pretty good about it. But my concern is that I will end up being a 225 pound strong person uh, if I continue on this path instead of being an uh, 180 pound uh, or 185 pound uh, strong person with 15% body fat. So that's my goal. That's what I want to achieve in over the course of next 18 months. So I'll be turning uh, 14, like 18 months. So I want to give the best version of myself uh, to myself at 40. So I wanted to be at 185 pounds, 15% body fat, if that's possible in 18 months time frame from where I am right now. So the question I want to ask you is like, should I bring back cardio a lot? Because I used to do cardio. I have seen uh, uh, improvements there, but I stopped doing cardio and just focused on strength training. So I wanted to know uh, um, if uh, I'm, I'm confused about this whole cardio thing. Is it should should someone like an obese guy like me should focus on cardio and not just strength training? So if you guys can give some clarity around that, that would be helpful. Not not yet, fine. not yet, Pradeep. You're you're actually a couple things. One, you're actually doing pretty damn good. Okay, so I want to start by saying that the fact that you're dropping inches on your waist uh, and three inches on your waist is significant. So you're actually yeah. doing really good. What I what I am reading that you didn't say yet is your maintenance calories around 2,000 calories. So, yeah, it's around 2,300. So, it's improved a little bit, yeah. yeah. So if we were to continue down the path of just restricting calories and or potentially adding cardio, eventually you're going to get to a place where you're eating pretty low calorie 
in order for you to get to that 185 range that you want to, and it's probably not sustainable. So where I would take you right now is actually into a kind of a mini bulk where we're trying to increase your calories. Because part of why you feel like you're stalled out a little bit is for your size, 2,000 calories is pretty low. Like I'd like to see you get up to a place where we're, we're north of 3,000 calories for the amount of size that you have on you. And that would make the cut a lot easier, even though that's going to delay the weight loss momentarily. In the long run, it's going to speed up your results. And then also when you get to your 185 range, it'll be more ma uh, maintainable than if we just continue down the path of cutting. Yeah. Pradeep, before, you know, I answer the question about cardio and, and all that, and, and what Adam said is, I mean, obviously on point, but I think it's important to understand what's happening uh, with your body. So I'm going to use an analogy uh, that might help you understand, right? So let's say you're at a job and you make, uh, let's say you make $50 an hour and you need to make more money. So you decide I'm going to just work more hours or you could take some money aside and invest it in accounts that give you a return of, let's say, 10%, you know, year over year. Working more hours will get you more money right now, faster. But the investment will get you more money easier uh, in the long run. So what you're doing right now is you're setting yourself up for better, more sustainable results in the long run. So will you lose weight on the scale faster if you just did a bunch of cardio right now? You would. But would you be setting yourself up for a potential failure? Definitely. So there's nothing wrong with doing cardio. Um, in fact, what I would recommend you do right now is just try to walk. Just try to walk a few times a day, probably after breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Just do that for now. Stay on track. Um, and what you're doing right now is you're building muscle. Because look, if you lose three inches, that's a lot. Okay, Three inches around the waist is a lot. If you lost three inches around your waist and your weight stayed the same, you lost a substantial amount of body fat and gained a substantial amount of muscle. And that muscle is very active. It's going to burn more calories for you. It's going to give you a faster metabolism. And if you do this, if you continue on the right path, eventually you're going to end up in a position where it's much more maintainable. It's much more sustainable than what you might've done before. So you got to really look at this and say, okay, I'm, I'm in this for the long run. I want to do this in a way to where I don't find myself bouncing back and forth like everybody does. Like if you look at the statistics on weight loss, it's like 90% fail rate, right? We don't want to do the 90% fail rate. Like it's great if you lose 30 pounds now, but who cares if you gain it back and then some later on, right? So we I'm want to do this the right way. No, wherein I lost weight before and I gained it all back. That's why I'm really happy I got into stunt training now. Yeah. Yes. So so you're you're doing it you're doing the right you're you're going the right direction right now. It's just you got to stay the course and allow the metabolism to build, allow the muscle to build. Um, but if the fact that you lost inches and your weight stay the same is actually really good news to me. If I was your trainer, I'd be very ecstatic about that. There's another part to this. I'm looking at your question. You didn't say this yet, but you said your calories are around 2,300. Your protein is about 120 grams. Mm -hmm. I, I would say, uh, keep your even if you kept your calories the same, but just increase your protein and maybe drop your carbs a little bit, I bet you'll see even better results. I'd like to see you aim for 180 grams of protein a day. Well, in a perfect world, this is actually, okay, a, a perfect world right now is you take the advice on walking, you know, say a total of a half hour to 45 minutes a day, like post-workout, like Sal was saying, breaking it up in 10-minute, 20-minute walks or whatever, or in one shot, doesn't matter. Add that, increase your protein. Uh, I actually wouldn't reduce carbs. I'd actually use that as his bump of oh, calories. Oh, yeah, because then it would, it would only All be right. another 50, 60 grams. Right? Yeah, you're yeah. not talking about... So literally just bump mm -hmm. the protein up. The additional movement from the, the walking is going to negate any any fat gain, I think, from the additional calories. And those additional grams of protein will support the weight training you're doing and hopefully speed your metabolism up. But you'd said 18 months, right? That's the, kind of the goal, I think. That's by the yeah. way, that's just, and I'm going to say some hypothetical numbers that are, but to give you an idea of like how good you are right now, you could focus on reverse dieting, meaning increasing calories, building strength, not really losing weight on the scale for let's say the next three months. And you're going to put yourself in a really good place, calorie maintenance wise, and then start cutting from there. And you'll, you'll hit your goal before the 15 months is up after that. So you're you're in a good you're in a good place right now, but the focus should be on building muscle and getting your calorie intake up without 
adding a bunch of weight on the scale. Like that would be if you and I at the end of 30 days looked at each other and you're like, Adam, my waist hasn't changed. The scale hasn't changed, but I am eating 2,300 calories every single day. I would tell you that's a huge win. And if we can do that next month and do another 300 calories and then another month and do another 300, now we're up to 2,900 calories a day and you're not moving on the scale, then I could go, all right, bro, let's drop you down to 2,300 and watch the weight just come off. So that's kind of what it would look like. Got it. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, it makes complete sense to me. Actually, I'm glad I called because I was actually in my mind thinking of going for a cut, but the advice you guys tell me is telling me is to go for a mini bulk. So yes, uh, yes, I like that. And are you following any of our programs right now? Not yet. Uh, I'm actually following this five by five routine uh, from one app called Strong Lips, which I'm using, uh, but. Uh, I haven't still plateaued yet. So I was thinking of changing programs once I hit my, once my progressive overload hits a plateau. Right now, I started with an empty bar eight months back. And then right now I'm at around 200 pounds of a square squat. And I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm going to max out soon. So at that time, I want to move to something. But during this process, one question I have for you guys, when I just said the follow up question is that as I increase my weights, I am noticing that. Uh, my right is working more. I'm a right-handed guy. So my right is working more mm-hmm. than my left. So I'm trying to take some time and or not increasing the loads and get more, I don't know the right word. Balance. Stability or balance. Balance, or balance. Yeah. yeah. Balance on both sides. So that's something I am. Uh, yeah. Let us, let us give you a program because yeah. we have a perfect program for what you're experiencing right now. So let us give you a program. I, I would love to see you do some map symmetry right now because it's, it's specifically designed to, to balance out the left and right. And if you already are noticing that, you notice it well enough, that would serve you more to to get into that right now as soon as you can. And it would be good because we're going to go on a little bit of a bulk, so it'll be a new routine. So sending a new a, a new signal to the body, a different training uh, method with the calorie increase would, would only benefit you. So let us send that over to you. I appreciate that. All right. Thank you so much. You got it. Thanks for calling in. Thank you. Again, love all that you do and – more power to you guys. Yeah. Awesome. No problem, man. Thank you. All right. Yeah, that, uh, um, I, you know, I like using that analogy because uh, I, I think that's the main reason why people fail is mm-hmm. they go for the quick result. And yeah, you'll, you'll, the scale will move fast if you just stop eating and do a lot of movement. But it's, you're, there's, you're not going to, look, the, again, the data is clear. It's a 90% fail rate with that approach. Yeah. I, I would say closer to 100% if you stretch it out long enough. So it's like, do you want to do this in a mm-hmm. way to where you can keep it? Or do you want to play this game where you go up and down your whole life? Well, that's why it's always been hard to talk somebody out of that, you know, because it does uh, produce, you know, a more rapid result, but it's not a sustainable approach. And to think of it more of an investment and, you know, really kind of like diligently drawing that out is is you know something that uh, is a hard thing to sell as a coach but it's the right thing well it's a, it's a brilliant analogy too because you do see those results in the short term but how many people could really just like working the extra let's say four or five hours a day like you're already working an eight to ten hour day but you now know oh if i work yeah. four or five more hours i w- you will get more money yeah but, but ask yourself how long would you continually work 12 to 14 hour days every single day yeah. and even if you could see yourself doing that how miserable are you gonna feel yeah like for and how then, and then from where do you go from there exactly you're only you're not gonna work now 20 hour days no. you're gonna inevitably you're gonna go back the other direction and then the the crash and that's exactly what happens with people with this is that they're in a place right now at the and i, I this is a this is a great question because this is a very common place mm-hmm. right take out his height his weight and eight, all that stuff does is irrelevant but Somebody who is trying to cut, gets stuck, hits this plateau, seeing strength gains, but not seeing, and they're already kind of low calorie. And the the thought is, oh, add cal- add you know cardio, reduce calories, and yeah, you'll see this initial drop. But then you have to ask yourself, ask ask yourself, oh, now I'm eating fifteen hundred calories. I'm a two hundred pound man, fifteen hundred calories, and I'm doing cardio three four times a week. Like, is that something I'm going to do for the rest of my life? Not no. realistically. No, think long term and make it work forever. That's the that's the bottom line. Next caller is Ryan from Nebraska. What's up, Ryan? How can we help you? Hey, uh, how you guys doing today? Good, good. good. All right, man. Good. Well, I'd like to start with the obligatory uh, thanks for all the great content you guys put out. Um, I just discovered you guys in December, 
uh, yet I've listened to probably hundreds of your episodes and you're now the only podcast I listen to. Wow. All right. So thanks for that and uh, keep up the great work. Excellent. Huge compliment. Thank you. Um, so a little background on me. I'm 40 years old. Uh, I started my journey back in October of 2022. Uh, I weighed in at 305 pounds. I was obviously not happy about that. Um, although I've been overweight my whole life, I've never broken that 300 pound mark. So uh, I knew something had to change. Uh, I started cutting out all the processed foods and fast foods, uh, started concentrating on a high protein whole foods diet. Um, but I was kind of stuck in that uh, beginner, you know, lots of cardio, not a lot of strength training phase for a while there uh, until I discovered mind pump. Um, and now I, I do strength training, um, do more compound movements. The big five basically eliminated cardios, cardio started tracking my calories. Um, and, uh, fast forward to today, um, down to 260 pounds. I just finished Hell pre phase yeah. of maps anabolic. Uh, I actually start phase one today. Um, so that leads me to my question here. I'm trying to really dial in on my macros, um, but I'm kind of confused on what my fat intake should be and how my fat intake will uh, affect my my fat loss for somebody who's trying to lose a significant amount of fat like I am. That's a good question. So yeah. you're hitting your protein, which is important. A certain amount of fat is essential in your diet, meaning you have to eat a certain amount of fat because your body can't produce essential fatty acids. Carbohydrates are not essential, meaning you can never eat a single carb again and you'll be totally fine. Then Now, that doesn't mean it's uh, optimal. Most people do best with some carbohydrates in their diet as well. So basically, what I'm trying to say is there's a lot of flexibility here with your carbs and fats. So if you look at your total calories, it says up here, I'm reading your question, that you're aiming for about 2,500 calories a day, about 220 grams of protein. That means the rest of the calories now can get uh, partitioned to fat and carbs. What I would do is I would, as long as you hit your essential fat, which probably for someone your size, you're looking at about 70 grams, <clears throat> the rest can be carbs, or you can have no carbs and the rest be fat, or, I mean, really it's real flexible and you got to kind of feel it out and see what works best for you. Some people do really well with more carbohydrates. Other people do really well with lower carbohydrates, but what's going to make you gain or lose body fat are the calories. So aside from the essential amount of fat that you need, essential proteins that you need, the rest of it's pretty flexible. So if I had two different clients, both eating 2,500 calories, um, I could have one that eats more carbs and one that eats more fats. And it's, it's all based off of feel. That's how I would determine whether or not they eat more fat or more carbs. I see. Okay. So it'd be, you'd, it'd be safe to, you know, maybe have a little higher fat days on my low carb days and, yeah, and, yep. and vice versa. Yeah. Yep. As long as your calories are the same, it, it really doesn't matter to be and, honest with you. And now that you're tracking, Ryan, you can start playing with different ways on how you intake your carbohydrates, right? So, you know, try one day having most of your carbs earlier in the day, like before your workout and see how your workout feels. And then maybe on another day, go really low carbohydrate in the morning and then load your carbs after a workout and see how you mm -hmm. feel. And then do another time where you split them in between and you really start to hone in on how your how your body likes carb as far as the amount of carbohydrates and when and you you'll notice a difference in your workout like it's and some people it's a, a major difference some people can tell a little bit like um i know that i have there's a certain amount of grams of carbs i have to have before a workout or i just have a really weak ass workout and that affects your results right if you go into workouts and you're having phenomenal workouts every time because you're well fed it's going to promote more muscle growth. You're going to have better results. If you're kind of dragging ass all the time because you don't have enough carbs and you don't feel fueled for it, your workouts are going to be half-assed. And so play with that and see how you feel. Sal, on the other hand, is somebody who who does much better on like a higher fat, lower carbohydrate. So I think this is a good time now that you're tracking to kind of play with that. And and I think you're in a pretty good place too, calorie-wise. I think that if 2,500 is a, is a cut for you and you're actually leaning out that place, and you're hitting your protein intake, which is most important. And as long as you don't go under that, say, 75 to 90 grams of fat every day, you're in a good place. Yeah, here's a good starting point, Ryan. Why don't you do 200 grams of carbs and about 90 grams of fat? Start with your 220 grams of protein. That, that'll put you at about 2,500 calories. Start there, see how you feel. And if you want to lower fat, raise carbs, or vice versa, go ahead and play with that. And just see how you feel, energy-wise, sleep-wise, <laughs> 
you know, for me, if I eat too many carbs, I'll feel, I'll feel lethargic. Um, but if I eat too low of carbs then my workouts tend to suck. Mm -hmm. So, you yeah. know, so, so there's going to, you're going to find that what works for you, but the numbers I gave you is kind <clears> of a, a decent starting point. It's almost a one-to-one -one carb to protein. So 220 grams of protein, 200 grams of carbs, about 90 grams of fat. That'll keep you at about 2,500 calories. So you could start there. Another thing I want to add that you you start to pick up on now that you're tracking and you're doing this is that's really cool. Um, not only is playing with carbohydrates to see how your workouts feel, uh, I think a good strategy. Also paying attention to the way you eat on days when you don't work out and how a satiety. So for example, I was telling you how I like high carbohydrates around my workouts on workout days. On an off day, I like the reverse because if I go high fat, low carbohydrate, it doesn't stimulate my appetite as much. So it's easier for me to stay disciplined and not over consume where if I eat a lot of carbohydrates and I don't go expend it in the gym, I tend to want to eat more and overeat. So also pay attention to that as you manipulate your fats and carbs, pay attention to how it stimulates your appetite. And what you might find is on workout days, you eat a certain way on non-workout days, you eat another way. And so that, that's, it allows a lot of flexibility. Yeah. And that's, that's kind of what I do now. Uh, typically on my foundational days, I'll, I'll eat more carbs typically uh, before and after the workout uh, than I do on the non-foundational days. I try to stick to a fairly low carb diet just as if, uh, I guess, how they how they sit with me to an extent. But uh, some carbs feel a lot heavier than others, you know? Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and, you know, the, the fat doesn't make you gain fat. Carbs don't make you gain fat. Neither do proteins. It's the excess calories yeah. that'll make you gain body fat. So think of it that way, right? So... Um, sometimes people, you know, they think, oh, if I eat more fat, uh, and, and less carbs because it's fat, it's going to get turned into fat easier or something like that. That's not how it works. Now, what you might want to pay attention to are what kinds of fats you get because of your blood lipid levels and, and how you feel. Some people do better with, you know, less saturated fats than other people do. Other people are totally fine with that. I eat a ton of saturated fats and my lipids always look good. So, you know, that's, those are other things to consider, but if you're in a cut, uh, you'll get away with a lot. So I, I wouldn't worry too much about that if it's whole foods. I would say yeah. just focus on kind of those macro targets I gave you. Do that for a little while and then kind of play with it and ha see. Ha Ryan, have you had have you had blood work done at, at all any time recent? Um, I did last year for a little bit. I went uh, to a testosterone clinic. Okay. Um, and I was getting some testosterone, but my, I mean, kind of an excuse, I guess, but my, my schedule... Uh, it was pretty hectic, so I wasn't really getting in workouts like I was hoping to. Mm. Um, so I, I eventually I stopped doing the testosterone because I wasn't really seeing any results. But that's mostly because I wasn't uh, changing my lifestyle yeah. to to complement the increase in, in testosterone. So I would like to start going back to that um, soon. Now that I have uh, you know uh, got these habits down and and you know I work out regularly and and all that stuff. So. Yeah, get into our our free forum, MP Hormones. Get in there, and uh, <clears throat> I mean it's it's totally free for you to access on Facebook. And yeah. Uh, yeah, we've got the we've got the team on there that will be answering questions. And so when when the time comes, you're ready to do that. <clears throat> you can go through them and get their blood work. I definitely at, at your age, where you're at right now, we're playing manipulating calories. It'd be interesting just to see your horm hormone profile and see where you're at right now, just as a good benchmark uh, and and a place that we can check up on every I don't know, say six months to a year to see uh see all your your blood markers gotcha all yeah right. will do all right man thanks, all right Ryan. thanks for calling in yep thank you you all got right. it yeah the uh the carbs and fats are pretty funny right <clears throat> it's like some so it's it could be so individual again as, as long as you eat your essential fats then base it off of how you feel and it's so weird I, i've known people i've had clients where low fat high carb just makes them feel good and then i've had clients where it's the exact opposite Mm -hmm. So you, you, that's where there's a lot of flexibility. The protein tends to be consistent. That tends to be consistent. Yeah. The only thing I do see sometimes is like an increase, say like you're eating a lot of nuts or something that, that has a bit of a higher calorie uh, amount, you know, due to the fat content that uh, is unaccounted for, which then kind of creeps in in the overall uh, calorie uh, amount. But other than that, like it has that effect where it satiates. So it's like, you know, like it's higher calorie, but also too, it'll, it'll satiate you more, which then, you know, promotes you to not have as like raging of an appetite. Eating. Yeah. I, so I highly recommend people don't eat nuts without measuring. 
It's yeah. one of the, it's probably it's a sneaky one. It's hella sneaky. It's one of those ones that you can grab a handful and go, oh, that's probably 300 only. calories. Dude. Yeah. And it's <laughs> uh, way more than you normally think. And even though like nuts can be a great source of fat, you don't need much to hit what you need from it and you easily can overeat it. And so, you yeah. know, what's a hack for that is I would, when my clients would, cause they're like, oh, I love them. I used to tell them to buy them where they'd have to take the shell off. Because mm. it would slow down the yeah. process. Because you get them you just... de-shelled. Oh, yeah. You're just, you know, smashing them. But if you have to, like, break the shell, it slows it down. You tend to eat less. So I would make them dip. So, like, when they get, like, it doesn't matter what nuts. Cashews, peanuts, whatever, right? Almonds. Whatever, you know, 20 ounce, 30 ounce bag or whatever. And then break, get those little mini. Oh, yeah. Like portion little. Portion them out. Yeah. And portion out one ounces. So just as soon as you buy it. By the way, go one home. ounce of nuts is not that much. It's not. When you, you know, when you, when it's you, a tease. Go, yeah, go home and, and weigh it out. And, and obviously, depending on the size of the person, one ounce to three ounces worth of stuff. And then you just, and you pack it out. That way, when you go to grab it, you know. You know, it take you just a little bit of time. You get home from the grocery store, it take you another, you know, five, 10 minutes to do that. But then at least now you know what you're getting a hold of every time you grab that. Next caller is Brad Fisher from Ohio. Brad, what's happening? How can we help you? Hey, guys. Thank you for taking my question. Love the show. Um, so my question is around programming. Um, you guys really opened my eyes to the importance of goal setting and building programs, you know, good programming accordingly. Clearly, you know, you've done that with the MAPS programs. So I'm 58 years old, been listening for 25 years, and my idea of uh, programming was go to the gym, lift heavy things for an hour, and, and come home. You know, based on equipment availability was sort of how I would do things. So pathetic. Um, mm -hmm. So thank you for what you've taught me in the short period of time I've become aware of you. So last year, listening to Joe Rogan, he had a Dr. Peter Atia on his show, and Dr. Atia, you know, what he does is he focuses on applying science uh, to longevity. So, you know, what are the things from a fitness, nutrition, stress-related things I should be thinking today to live a long and healthy life down the road? Um, so during that call, he mentioned something about this notion of a centenarian Olympus. So for maybe the listeners who aren't familiar or haven't heard of this, it's you set goals as if you're going to live to be 100 years old. So at age 100, these are the things I want to be able to do. So it could be something as simple as I want to get out of a chair unassisted to going upstairs without a railing. It could be I want to be able to play golf or walk. So, so what I've done is I've come up with my own goals. I've got 14 of them, and I'm sure I'm going to add to these. Um, but my question for you guys, you know, based on these 14 goals, knowing that I'm getting close to 60 years old and I'm going to continue to add to them, what is the programming I should be thinking about today look like? What are the things I should be building around, you know, these goals, you know, that I'll be in 40 years from now doing, you know, and, and how does that look going forward? So doing things today, five years, 10 years, and is there any MAPS program adaptations out there that, that could accomplish or help me accomplish these goals. Yeah. Well, I love this question. Let's <laughs> yeah. hear the, let's hear the 14 goals. Yeah. <laughs> Rapid fire. All right. So uh, let's see. Uh, I want to be able to get up off the floor under my own power. Okay. I don't want to be able to walk up and down the stairs with um, a 10 pound bag of grocery in each hand. Um, be able to lift a 30 pound suitcase uh, and put it in an overhead bin. I continue. I expect to be traveling at a hundred. Um, Get out of a pool without a ladder. Get into the pool without a ladder. Um, I'm assuming this will be a great grandchild, but uh, lifting a 30 pound child off the ground. Um, be able to stand up off the ground without using my hands. Um, I want to be able to ride my motorcycle. Um, let's see. I want to be able to play golf. How about just tying my shoes? I want to be able to bend over at the waist, standing up and tie my shoes. I want to be able to paddleboard. I love to paddleboard. I love to mountain bike. Uh, this one, I think you guys will like. I want to be able to carry my beach chair and a cooler of beer in each hand and be able to walk to the beach and be able to get in and out of the chair without any assistance. Mm. Yeah. Very so, specific. I'm all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> I like these. Okay. So I love these. So there's, there's two things based on those goals, two things that are going right. to help you. Number one is to build and maintain strength. Strength. Yeah, almost every single thing you said 
what would prevent you from doing every single one of those is a loss of strength. Mm -hmm. Okay. So strength training is going to be the foundation. The second thing, there are some skills in there that you listed mm -hmm. like paddle boarding, for example, the best thing you can do to keep those skills is to practice those skills on a regular basis. So it's actually quite right. simple. Now, where does the complexity come in? Well, the complexity comes in because from now till a hundred, you know, that's, that's over 40 years, you know, your things happen in life. Um, you know, sometimes you get sick, sometimes there's more stress, less stress, you work out more or less. The, the idea is to be able to modify your training in the moment to improve the quality of your life in the context of, of the current moment. Okay. So that means sometimes you're going to need more mobility work. Other times you're going to need less mobility work. Sometimes you're going to train heavier. Sometimes you're going to train lighter. Um, I would say form and technique should always be the, the, the focus, but that's true no matter what. Form and technique are always going to be uh, number one for anybody, regardless of their goals, because that's where you maximize results, minimize things like risk of injury. And that's pretty much it. So as you get closer to that age, you just have to, you're probably going to have to modify things here and mm -hmm. there and place more focus on some stuff like, like, oh my God, I noticed that, uh, you know, I'm strong, but I'm getting tighter. It's harder for me to bend over and tie my shoes. Well, now we're going to incorporate more flexibility and mobility training, mm -hmm. you know, or I have the strength to walk to the beach, holding my beach chair and beer, yeah. but I start to get out of, out of breath. All right, I want to incorporate a little bit more stamina training. So I can, you know, maintain my cardiovascular fitness. So, but, but ultimately what all the things you listed were strength and skill. That's yeah. it. I think too, like uh, based off of like just focusing on strength, uh, people could get into a, a point where they just think about, um, you, you know, your, your regular kind of compound lifts or, um, just, um, <clears throat> basically lifting uh in inside you know the constraints of a gym in terms of like the machines but really you have to think and expand upon that strength in terms of like in different directions and so uh for to, to maintain i guess i hate to use the word functional strength but really it's about functional right. strength it's about expressing um you know all the capabilities your joints have but but doing it in a way where uh you maintain that kind of stability and control uh and if you can focus on just moving in different directions rotating uh and expressing that movement with strength it's going to it's going to carry through basically any pursuit so strength's at the root of it all uh and, and so we talk about mobility and we talk about you know having uh restrictions most of that restriction is just because of repetitive stress and like doing the same thing all the time so uh to be able to kind of weave in from um, doing this by loaded, you know, heavy strength training focus, like those foundational type of workouts, but then also, uh, you know, complementing that with rotational movements and, and things that you can express in different directions, I think is paramount. I, I, I can be a little more specific. I think, I think, <clears throat> you know, the things I heard in there was, uh, I need the ability to be able to, to step up and stabilize. I need to be able to get up off the ground, like a Turkish get up. I need to be able to lift uh, a child up over my head potentially. So like a, you know, a overhead press or a circus press. These are all movements that would be, and then there's, uh, you need rotational strength for paddle boarding and something else you said that, that triggered rotational for me. Uh, MAPS performance is like literally has every aspect of that in it. So mm -hmm. if, if I were to build a routine, the strength training routine that was going to you know benefit or carry over into all these these pursuits it would look much like that now to sal's point it would be modified through my life so in the perfect world it looks just like maps performance in the state of high stress other shit going on maybe potential injury happened 20 years later of course it, it, i'm going to modify and change some of those things but the elements in that program, like there's there's an endurance aspect to that for stamina building in there. There's a rotational component in there. I believe we have Turkish get ups in that yeah, program. Yeah, and there's even an explosive component, which is something to even talking with somebody like a Joe DeFranco is something I didn't really consider for, you know, as you're aging. But uh, to be able to maintain the ability to move quickly uh, will prevent a lot of potential injury down the road as well. Yeah, I don't know if you've heard me say this before on the podcast, but that I believe that to be the single program of all the programs that I would be okay with one of my clients doing forever. And just because we, we did such a good job. It's so balanced. Of, yeah. Of, of balancing mobility, rotational, unilateral. Like, I mean, it really covers. 
and it's phased out in four phases instead of three. So, and you get even some stamina building in there for cardiovascular health. Like it really encompasses, you know, in my opinion, overall health and longevity better than any program we've ever written. And so I would literally live in that. And that doesn't mean you can't take exercises here and there and exchange them with something else you like doing right. or you, you right. have more specific to a sport or something you're doing. But really, like the the nuts and bolts of that program, it really addresses all the things that, that you said really well, I think. Do you have that program? I don't. I have Anabolic and I've got um, Prime Pro. Um, we'll send it to we'll you. Gonna, yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll send that you. one over to you for sure. So, so let me ask you something though with the with the explosive uh, you know getting close to 60 how do you incorporate that without injuring yourself when you haven't really done a lot of that for years and years and years because I've tried certain things mm -hmm. and it, invariably it seems like I, I create more problems than benefits you're just you're just doing the wrong stuff and you're probably going too far so yeah. like an explosive movement could literally be you just jump in yeah. place don't even land you, you just jump up you know like that's one okay um or it could be moving something Maybe a little so. faster yeah so you have to scale it to mm -hmm. something okay. that's appropriate so you might be looking at like athletes training and be like okay i'm gonna jump up on a big box and jump down that's gonna that might right. be too much right now so it's got to okay. be it's got to be appropriate and it could start real low but the point that justin made with that is whatever skill you stop practicing you end up losing so if you mm -hmm. stop practicing anything that involves any kind of explosiveness to it, then you'll lose it completely. So. Well, and two, like well, think about any time you're in a, a predicament where you you drop something or you know you have to move quickly out of the road or whatever it is, you slip right. on something. Okay, to be able to you know collect yourself rather quickly and be able to have that kind of control and strength to do that. Um, that's, yeah. that's what I'm Good kind point. of talking about with being able to move quickly out of situations and recognize that, have your body kind of respond appropriately. Yeah. Think yeah. of it this way, Brad, uh, when you do explosive training, don't mm -hmm. think that you're working out when you're doing it. Think you're practicing a movement. So it should feel like, Oh, I can do this. It should not feel like, Oh my God, I can barely okay. do this. Yeah. Because then you're asking for, for trouble. Well, a lot of people, we assume like, um, I mean, because a lot of plyometrics have well, a lot of jumping up and down, left and right. Kettlebell swings are great. But there's option. other forms mm -hmm. of explosive training that don't require up and down jumping or left or right jumping hard. That's probably the most risky or dangerous for the average client, especially yeah. in an advanced age, blowing a knee out, a hip going, something like that, because they do too much too fast. But you can do, uh, in fact, one of the exercises in MAPS Performance is a uh, reverse lunge to an overhead press like that you're mm. you're never leaving the ground in that movement but you can resist the way down slowly and then explode the weight up and that's okay. you're now getting the benefits of explosive training without you know jumping in the air and landing train, train within your capabilities uh, this is true for any form of exercise mm -hmm. okay and then if once once those capabilities expand then you train within those new capabilities so, well, and I'd like to comment. I'd like to comment too that I think you made, Adam. It's you know, if there's certain exercises that I like, incorporate those. So, for instance, for my my cooler of beer, I've been doing um, you know the suitcase carry, right? Yes, you know, love I take that. a 45 Perfect. pound plate, right? I can carry 45 pound plate. I can carry probably at least two cases of beer, um, <laughs> you know. And for for paddle boarding, I do like single leg Romanian deadlifts. I mean, talk about balance and love that. Yeah, um, you know, love that. Yeah, and okay. One of the okay. best ways to to work on capabilities like that is to do um, sports and activities. I mean, you keep paddle boarding, I mean, you're gonna you're gonna maintain the ability to paddle yeah. board. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Okay. All right. Awesome. All right, Brad. We'll send over mass performance so you'll have it. You guys are the best. Thanks so much. All right, All right. Man. All right. Good one. Yeah. Aside from the common like heart disease, cancer, right? If if you aside from those things, if you look at people as they age, their the challenges that they uh, that they come upon, the things that tend to kill them uh, are all strength related, weakness. So you look at balance, falling down, like that's all strength. You just don't have strength. And if you've I've worked with a lot of people in this mm -hmm. age group, and you can see it once they start to trip. And they try to catch themselves. They don't have the strength yeah. to support themselves. And it's like a slow motion fall. Boom. Well, and they fall down. And well, then the bones aren't strong. The joints aren't strong. They break something. And then it's it's real bad. So yeah. it's like maintain strength. This is the reason why the the squat has been touted as the king of all exercises for so long. Because if you can maintain a good, deep, full range of motion squat for your whole life, like 
you're going to be able to do a lot. Of, yeah, you're firing on all cylinders. Yes. It just, there's, there, it requires so much coordination from top to bottom and strength and mobility to do that, that if you incorporate that and you get, and you stay strong in that till your late years, you're going to be pretty capable. And that doesn't mean you're going to be great with rotational strength. And there's mm. obviously aspects that you can, but that's a, a goddamn good foundation right there is to be able to squat deep all the way into your eighties and nineties. Yeah. And to kind of add on to like the moving fast part of it, um, there's ways to do that with less impact. And I think yeah. that's, you know, that's a concern, especially like as you go further and you haven't, you know, been, incorporating that enough and it's something that you know your body's gonna have to kind of relearn you know there's there's ways to um progress that and and you know using bands is, is a way to do that you know safe and effectively like there's machines there's even like so this is where i would actually like probably take a client like that and we'll do like um you know a salt bike or something we'll just slowly kind of ramp our speed up with that yeah. or like a row machine exactly you know? look you're not going to go from squatting zero pounds to 300 pounds right. just like you wouldn't go from doing no explosive movements to doing just, to moving as fast as you can yeah so i just want to put that it's literally like there. this it's literally like this if this is new to you just move a little faster, just a little bit, and get I, and get good at that. I and then move I, a little faster and get good. good I at just that. see a person thinking, you know, three foot. Yeah, exactly. Jump boxes, yeah, and it's like, no. and and ice skaters. Those two movements, no. I'm not even wasting. That'd be my like time. looking at a champion powerlifter and be like, oh, that's how what I need to do now. Yeah, you know, there's no there's weights. no reason to even do that at all. You can make a a, a sing, single step up an incredible explosive movement. Mm -hmm. You know, and, you can do a standing and, squat. Just do it a little faster. Yeah, like, that's it. It's, it's just it. speed. You just move a little bit faster. Last question is Ryan from Wisconsin. What's up, Ryan? How can we help you? Hey, how's it going, guys? Good. 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 So a simple question is, what do you do when the numbers are not making sense? <laughs> um, <laughs> what I mean by that is my journey, I've been an athlete my entire life. Um, about eight years ago, I lost. I went from 340 pounds down to about 255 pounds. And then about a year after that, we had our third child, put on about 35 more pounds of that. And then that's just a little backstory. Two years ago, started working out with a trainer again. I work out with a trainer three times a week. I do cardio usually 30 to 45 minutes before my weight training session with my trainer. Uh, and then I try to do another 30 to 45 minutes, an additional two times a week. Uh, I also work with a nutritionist. We've even interjected a chef uh, who's preparing all of our lunches, all of our dinners. And uh, my calorie intake right now is right around 1,900 to 2,100 calories a day. Just recently, um, within the last week and after, you know, I was listening to a lot more of you guys. Bumping up more, adding another weight training session, adding another 50 uh, grams of protein. So trying to get around that 200 to 220. But I've only lost 15 pounds in the last year and only 25 pounds in the last two years uh, in total. So I feel like the results are not quite matching, you know, the effort put in. Well, uh, Ryan, the, the, the numbers do make sense, bro. That's way too low calories, man. How, what's Especially your body weight right now? Especially the activity that you got going on, too. Yeah. What do you weigh right now? 268. Yeah. yeah that's, that's like a bikini competitor, bro. You're a, you're a big you're a big ass dude. That's like you 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 would I wouldn't want you at uh, I don't know if I'd ever want you to cut down to even two thousand calories. The goal would be and you're training as much as you're training plus doing the cardio you're doing. The reason why it's what's happening to you you're just you're stalling out. Your body needs to be fed more. Wants more calories for all the work you're doing. I definitely would, would put you on a reverse diet right now and increase caloric intake for a while and kind of go on a bulk. And get to a place where we're eating more like 2,800, 3,000 plus calories before I reverse you or before I cut you back down the other direction. Yeah, in, in the mm -hmm. process, you're focusing on building strength. And so what, what, what this should look like, Ryan, is over that process is that the scale shouldn't move much. So you're slowly increasing calories. The scale is going to stay relatively stable. You're a lot stronger in the gym. So the weight training, you're really seeing results with the weight training. And then when you get the calories up to where Adam said, then you can cut from there and then you should start to see your body respond. Because right now you're stuck at this point where you're going to work out more and cut your calories even more. Yeah. I mean, is that the direction you want to go? We get you down to 1,500 calories and then get you down to 1,200 calories. Like, like, obviously that's going to be impossible to maintain. So we got to reverse and focus on building muscle and speeding up your metabolism a bit before we cut again. 
yeah, for sure. That's not sustainable to cut any further. And that's the kind I'm comfortable. At least I have been with the calories I'm eating. I'm not comfortable with the progress that I've been not seeing. Yeah. Uh, I have converted, you know, I was over 40% body fat when I started just measured last week. I'm at 27. So I've converted a lot to muscle. Um, but still just obviously retaining it all in the torso area. And that's where I, I like most other people would like to lose it. Yeah. How, how tall are you? Six, two. All right. What, what, what sport did you play? Football. Yeah. So, you know, there's a, athletes can be challenging because they tend to try to outwork yeah. uh, everything. You so it's, hammer your way through it. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so it's like, oh, it's identify. not working. Throw more. It's not working. Throw more. Um, you got a lot of muscle in your body. Holy cow. You, you, you've got some good muscle, but your body's learning to become very efficient with the yeah, type just, of training and the type of calories you're consuming. It's your body is really doing a good job at becoming efficient, which is, there's nothing wrong with that. It's supposed yeah. to do that, but it, it you can't keep going in this direction because I mean, you can see, right? Like, okay, you're going to cut 500 more calories. That might result in another, you know, five to 10 pounds of weight loss. You'll plateau again. Mm -hmm. And then what do you do? Go down to the 500. Now you're down to a thousand calories. What's your trainer saying to you right now? Do you have you, yeah, so he's he's on board with adding more strength in, backing off on the cardio. You know, he and I have had that conversation a lot about strength versus cardio. And he says, Ryan, they're neither one of them is bad. Usually, when people say only do strength training, it's because they don't have the time to do both. He's like, if you can incorporate both, that's at least what he he recommends. And that's been a little bit of the frustrating piece. Is you know, we have the trainer, the nutritionist, the chef, and all these people involved, and doctors even. You know, I've gone to Mayo Clinic and had physicals done and, you know, saying, hey, this is the issue. The math doesn't make sense. I'm putting in all this effort, and I understand where you're coming from as a former athlete. It's like, train harder, go harder. It's eventually got to yeah. work, and it's just not working. I would I would do this. I would uh, – Put them on maps and a ball yeah, three times would, a week. I'd make you strong – if you were my client, I'd be like, let's mm -hmm. see how strong we can get you without the scale moving too much. Let's reverse diet you. Um, let's get you off the, or, or reduce that type of cardio that you're doing and instead incorporate more walking because mm -hmm. cardio, there's nothing wrong with cardio. It's, yeah. it's healthy for you. But right now, because we're trying to speed up your metabolism, it is sending a bit of a conflicting signal. That's the only thing. Because especially we're trying to speed the, especially up your that low calorie, Sal. Yeah. yeah. So it's, you got to understand this too. If you, if you are, are are doing cardio uh, while you are fed, that's one thing. But doing cardio and only eating 1,900 calories for the amount of muscle you have on your body, your body is telling you exactly what it should tell you, which is fuck you. Just, yeah. You know, feed me, bro. Feed me. You're you're pushing yeah. me, and you're only feeding me this much. Like I'm going to, going to adapt and get used to it because I can't. This is not what I want, and so it's revolting against you right now. So I would completely cut out the cardio before the lifting for sure because the goal is to build strength and that would cut into mm -hmm. that i don't want to do that at all and then the other places that you were doing traditional cardio i would still walk i would still move power walking is okay but not intense hard cardio and then i would reduce the probably amount of days a week you're lifting down to like a three day a week full body like maps and a ball well here's where you kind of also have to reprogram your brain like you're doing a great job getting in shape but this is a, a, a body compositional goal you have. This is a different pursuit that you're looking at right now. So such a good point. You know, you have to you have to look at it completely differently and be open to a completely different formula. Uh, I don't think this is the path, right? This is the one that you used to do all the time. I completely like relate. So, you know, I could just grind my way. I could go to the gym. I could bust, you know, I could burn calories like, you know, the best of them. Uh, but in terms of like getting my body to form and shape the way I wanted, uh, that's not the formula for this. Yeah, I would. I yeah, that's right. Yeah. Sorry. Let's try and reverse you up to up to 3000 at least calories and then cut from there. I think and really and really see how much strength we can build. Where would you recommend, how would you recommend adding those? All in protein or kind of a mixture between just a definitely a, protein because you're definitely more protein because you're you're on the lower end of protein anyway. So I would I would push mostly protein and then I would then I would split the difference on fats and carbs and, and see what you you're, what you like better on there. I mean really you're, you're two sixty five, you said your body weight? Yeah. How many grams of protein are you eating a day again? Uh up until last week, probably around 150. This past 10 days, yeah. it's around 200. Yeah, 200 is good. I would go up to 230, yeah. 220, 230. 
And then you could, and that'll be the first reverse diet portion. And then from there, you could add more fats and carbs if you don't want to add more protein. Yeah, honestly, that's a good start, right? To like right now, and then and why? And you won't see a big, uh, you definitely you won't see a fat loss gain by doing this. So since we're telling you to switch over to like a MAPS anabolic, that means we're cutting back on your your calorie burn on lifting weights. We're cutting back on your calorie burn in the cardio by you increasing just protein that might be enough to already start to send you in the reverse direction and building some muscle and then we could add more calories after that what do you think yeah i like that yeah look look at it this way okay you're in a position where you're like okay this doesn't make any sense um my body's not budging in order for me to get my body to budge based off of what i've been doing that would mean i'd have to cut my calories more or work out even more and we know where that ends, okay? We know what the end of that looks like, and it, it doesn't seem sustainable. So the goal is let's get your metabolism to do more work for you. Not you, like not you do more work, mm -hmm. but your metabolism do more work for you. So this is going to take a little bit of time and investment in getting the metabolism to respond in the direction that we want. That means you have to feed it more, focus on building more muscle. That's the most effective way to do that. Mm -hmm. I want to send MAPS Anabolic to you, and I also want to give you access to our private forum so we can check in with you. So That would be awesome. Yeah, I, I would love to, to, to hear you go through this process. And I would say the first month, the goal is to bump the, bump the protein, reduce all the cardio activity, drop in and run MAPS Anabolic, which is a three-time-a-week full body routine and then trigger sessions on the off days follow the trigger sessions like they're designed and stay in touch with us we're in the we're in that forum let us know how you're feeling there's going to come a moment by the way this happens to my athletes always okay is you're going to feel like you're not doing enough mm -hmm. you're going to be like i'm not doing enough and 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 then the, the next battle you're going to have is going to be the psychological warfare the 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 old school mentality that you you could you could throw the shoulder pads on go fucking hammer it out and work your way through this goal that's like Justin said body composition is different than becoming a badass on the field or becoming a badass athlete it's a total different uh, game and so you're going to be challenged with that and so we're going to be there to hopefully support you so make sure you're talking to us in that form as you go through because that's yeah. your next challenge coming. So, and you're doing like five days a week of cardio, about 35 to 40 minutes. You know, if you got rid of yeah. that, if you got rid of that and just did maybe 12 or 13 minute walks after breakfast, lunch, and dinner, that's it. So after breakfast, lunch, and dinner, go to do 10 to 15 minute walk. So that's like 30 to 45 minutes a day of walking. That's a wonderful trade. And I think the walking is going to serve you better for this particular goal right now, which is to speed up your metabolism. Mm -hmm. Which, by the way, doesn't mean we won't reintroduce cardio down the road. But right now, when we're trying yeah, to that's right. rebuild the metabolism, because here's an area where like a, a trainer, or other, like I can tell this trainer is going to be this way because he's already told you that yeah. the only reason it's why someone bad. wouldn't do cardio is because they don't have the time. That's not true. If I'm trying to build a metabolism up right now and, I'm, and my client was eating as low of calories as you are, also adding cardio to that is not benefiting their metabolism. It's just not. It's That's not advantageous to speeding your metabolism up. It's the complete opposite signal that we're sending. Low calorie, lots of activity does not make my metabolism faster. What will make the metabolism faster is sending a signal to the body to build more muscle and feeding it the calories it needs to actually do that and build muscle. That's what we want to focus on now. When we get you to a place where you feel really good, you're eating lots of calories, then we go, okay, now let's start to reintroduce this cardio yeah, and, back in. And, and, and the, the walking three times a day, you know, 15 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes, which, uh, you know, equates to, you know, between 30 to 45 minutes a day of walking because it's broken up, because it's post prandial, right? Post meal, you're going to get hormonal benefits. So it's yeah. going to, it's going to manage your insulin levels, your blood sugar levels better. Active Be recovery. It's active recovery because it's broken up. It's not sending as loud of a, you know, build endurance, become more efficient signal. So yeah. if you tell your trainer that, I'm sure they won't even argue. Just say, hey, look, instead of doing this structured cardio, I'm going to walk three or three times a day, you know, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So it'll be the same amount of time. Maybe, maybe, because yeah. he's, he's having him do cardio before he weight yeah, trains. Yeah, I was going to say. That's, so that's yeah, kind uh, of an old school mentality of, yeah. you know, get him into the fat burning zone before mm -hmm. he lifts weights so that he's burning fat the entire yeah. workout. And so if he, he kind of... It, it, yeah. Was that the thought? And to be fair, he's not telling me to do, I, you know, okay. it's more of like, that's what I've always done. Warm okay, up, right, right, go right. run. And you guys tell me to cut out cardio. 
I don't have any problem with that. I okay. fucking hate cardio. <laughs> uh, you know, and so when I do cardio, I, I mean, I'm 265 pounds, so that's a ton of pounding on the joints. So yeah. I like oh, to do yeah. hill, hill walks and bike and, you know, all sorts of stuff besides running uh, yeah. a lot. Yeah, so three, a lot of intervals. three walks a day after breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I sw- you're going to love that. Yeah. that. That you'll love. Yeah. And, and then lift. It'll be more enjoyable and it'll benefit your body. Yeah, and go, and go lift and yeah. get strong. We'll send you MAPS Anabolic. You're going to be in the private forum. And uh, let's reverse diet. Yeah, let's let's keep in contact. I want to see how this works out. By the way, all of us have worked with clients in much, much more challenging positions uh, in the similar context. Yeah, yeah. And have seen tremendous. I had I had a female client who was doing seven days a week of cardio, yeah. twice a day lifting, which was going crazy. Her calories are twelve hundred. I got her to lifting three days a week, two days a week of cardio, and I got her calories from twelve hundred to twenty two hundred calories. This was over the course of I think eight months, and she got leaner. So. Um, that's just one example. So you're, you're going to do totally fine. You just have to approach it the right way. No, I appreciate it guys. And you mentioned hormonal, but I mean, I've already gone down that road too. So I've tried to lift up everything under the carpet to see what's going on. And, you know, I appreciate it. Sounds like at least it's not going to hurt anything. Might as well try it and that's see it. what kind that's of results it, we got. Yeah. Stay, you got it, Ryan. stay in touch with us, Ryan. Trust the process. Right. You got it. Thank All you. Right. Thanks brothers. Appreciate it. No yep. problem. That's a frustrating position to be in. Yeah, well, yeah. You know? I mean, how many times have you had somebody doing everything? Do, yeah, you know, and it's like, and look, if you don't know what's going on, if you don't understand the process, that is so frustrating because it's not like, look, you could be not getting results, not losing weight, and be like, yeah, my diet's crap. Yeah, I'm not working out. Mm-hmm. Okay, this makes sense. But if you're working out, you're tracking, you're training, you're like, you're looking at your food intake, you're looking at your workouts. You, this guy's hiring a trainer. He's got someone making his meals for him. You're looking at it, you're like, what is going on? This doesn't make it so so frustrating. I, but it's literally his body is doing what it's being asked. Yeah. So it's, it's it's not like he's got a broken body. It's doing exactly what he's asking it to, which is to become efficient. How many more people do you think that we have to help like this to get the fucking message oh, across to people of why we talk about cardio the way we talk about cardio? Exactly. It's like I'm so over this debate and argument with people. It's like this is actually very common. It happened, and now mm-hmm. it, it, in athletes too, especially because athletes want to work, like Justin's point, want to work everything off and burn the calories like crazy. But this would happen to most of my clients because we are taught if you want to lose fat, go run, burn yeah. calories, burn mm-hmm. calories, eat less, eat less, eat, less yep. eat better. And so yeah. you go from one side of not doing any of that shit. Uh, and eating like trash to eating really good and which means low way lower calories than what you were before and increasing all this cardio and then you eventually get to a place you and it by the way it works initially right. you see the results obviously making a change like seems that seems like it's as easy as a math problem right but and the, uh, until the math problem doesn't work that's anymore. right until you hit just like what he's saying like man the math isn't adding up well actually the math is adding up it's doing exactly what you're what you're telling your body but that's the problem is that everybody gets caught up in this like oh I'll just run more or I'll eat less it's like well eventually you run out of runway yeah. Yeah. and then what the fuck do you do it's because people do not consider the, the body adapts, man. the body's ability to adapt and change. And your metabolism is not stationary. Yeah. It changes all the time. And if you tell your body to be more efficient, it'll become more efficient. And it's really good at being efficient. It is much more challenging to make your body less efficient with calories or to burn more calories. So if you tell it to burn less calories, it will, and it'll do it effectively. And then you'll get stuck in this position where you're eating nothing and working out like crazy and then eventually give up. And that's uh, that's when they hire us and we got to <laughs> switch everything out. So <laughs> that's it. look, if you like the show, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any health or fitness goal. You can also find all of us on social media. So Justin is on Instagram at mindpumpjustin. Adam is on Instagram at mindpumpadam. And you can find me on Twitter at mindpumpsal. Today, we're going to teach you everything you need to know to build a strong, well-developed chest. When I think of weak points and and areas that I struggled with developing for a a really long time, chest was up there with the- Yeah, it was for me. It was for me for sure. I got more caught up in the weight I could lift versus how I was developing my body. I think it's one of the most challenging muscles to develop for most people because the form and technique. 